That's it. We are live with episode 14 of the Coin Jam podcast. And boy, is this an action packed episode for you all. We got a bunch of people already in the live chat who we got here. We got uh, Sean Crookshank. We got Arcade Maze, Wayne, uh, all of whom are Overtime Arcade channel members. Uh, who else is in here? We've got Josh O.D. Brown from the Canadian Arcade, ENKL, Encore MPW, uh, 3VI1J. Hello, world. Uh, maybe that's a robot. Uh, Papa Sean checking in from Peterborough, Ontario, the Wicked Arcade. What's up, bro? Uh, Brian Froeber. Uh, who else we got? Random Billy Bob, uh, another Overtime Arcade channel member. Jumping General, what would Jeff Kinder do in the house? Channel member. And uh, yeah, and it sounds like, maybe I shouldn't even say it, but uh, uh, Todd Tucky programmed a live stream against us, so very much not happy about that. Anyway, here we are, episode 14 of, 14 of the Coin Jam podcast. Uh, as always, I'm Charlie here from Overtime Arcade. Joined by my partners in crime, Kay from Prime Arcade, Liam from Retrobotics, and a mysterious new uh, permanent full-time co-host uh, from Parts Unknown. Uh, I don't know if they're going to come in from the shadows or what the story is there, but uh, very, very... Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Uh, <laughs> God, well, guys, are, are we in the basement? Uh, what was that? Oh, very nice. Uh, How come you nice. music? I want entrance music. What an intro. <laughs> I don't know. That's That's got some, uh, I don't know. You, you subverted the audience's expectations, I think, there. Holy you know, I, I got to tell you, though, I, that, I blame Josh Brown for that because Josh, like, like probably like five or six years ago, Josh is like, oh, dude, dude, what we should do is we should find a, 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 a blank frame where John has stepped out of his basement and just like green screen us in. I think I bought a green screen, I think like just before COVID to put down and start downstairs in my basement. And he's like, oh, dude, we got a green screen into John's basement. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? Uh, oh. That was hilarious. I know you had something planned for us. You got to update your name so people know uh, oh, who yeah. you are here. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, if you guys don't recognize this individual, he's been on the podcast a couple times before. Uh, if you're watching this, you've probably watched a bunch of his content. Uh, this is Chance from the Canadian Arcade, one half of the Canadian Arcade. We've also got um, uh, uh, Josh in the uh, in the live chat uh, hanging out. This is awesome. Uh, welcome, Chance. Welcome back. Welcome back full time. Welcome back permanently. You will fill in the seat that uh, that Jeremiah from Coin Op Corner uh, vacated. Jeremiah still doing okay. Still a friend, uh, you know, friend of the uh, uh, of the of the. I was going to say of the channel of the podcast. Uh, I think it's okay for me to say everyone else. So congratulations to Jeremiah and Mrs. Jeremiah, and Mrs. Coin Op Corner. So awesome. That was really cool. You had, uh, uh, you said you had something planned for us, but not what it was. And I mm. think you exceeded every possible expectation there. As we come to expect the, the high production value from, from the Canadian Arcade, because, you know, you're kind of a, a pro at this sort of thing. And now you're slumming it with us here with the low production values with unpaid accounts that have you know, in the, in the corner over there above your head, the, uh, the, the watermark and we need every dollar we can get. So we already have Sean checking in, uh, with a $200 million super chat donation saying chance already needs muting. So I'll go ahead and take care of that already. Say hi chance. See, see how easy that is. No problem. A click of a button. And That's one that happen. So if anybody else, if anybody else wants us to mute chance, all you got to do is make a little super chat donation and I will mute chance every time we get a donation. No problem at all. So on that note, uh, very interesting. I'm sorry, what was it? Very interesting. Oh, hold on. Let me unmute you there. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so on that note, I do have a present for you. Um, I'm Canadian, of course, as some of you may or may not know. Canadian arcade. Wait, what? When did this yeah. start? Like, oh, wow, who let no him idea. in? So there's something that I noticed because I, I do spend a lot of time in the States. 
And there's something that I noticed that you guys are accustomed to when watching Canadian broadcasting, Canadian or American broadcasting, American channels, American media. Um, so one of the things that I noticed is you guys have, it's legal in America to do uh, ads for prescription drugs. So yeah. I thought to, to make it fair, some people have a changes in behavior, hostility, agitation, depressed mood, and homicidal thoughts or actions while listening to or after stopping chance if you notice agitation, hostility, depression, or changes in behavior, thinking, or mood that are not typical for you or if you develop homicidal thoughts or actions, stop listening to chance and call your doctor right away, talk to your doctor about any history of depression or other mental health problems which can get worse while listening to chance. Some people can have allergic or serious skin reactions to chance, some of which can be life-threatening if you notice swelling of face, mouth, throat, or a rash, stop listening to chance and see your doctor right away, tell your doctor which medicines you're taking as they may work. Differently, when you listen to podcasts, chance dosing may be different if you have kidney problems. The most common side effect is nausea. Patients also reported trouble sleeping and vivid unusual. Strange dreams until you know how chance may affect you. Use caution when driving or operating machinery. Chance should not be taken with other podcast products. Is that fair? We're good. You know, what's funny is I tried to comment, uh, please pay us to mute him, but it says YouTube rejected your comment. Uh, this means they think it's spam. So... <laughs> no, I think it's because you're asking for funds. I don't think YouTube will let you ask for funds. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. YouTube wants the money because YouTube takes more than half of it. So yeah, fair. <laughs> you, YouTube wants that money. Holy smokes. I wonder, I'm just, I'm going to have to go back and listen to that. In super slow motion to see if there's anything I need to. Uh, no, no, um, you you don't need to bleep out, to bleep it. But I, it could be an, good... it'd be an FTC violation, right? Uh, who knows? FCC, FTC. You know, uh, I'm not sure if there were you know uh, ED pills being you know suggested in there. You know, try to keep this a, a family safe channel. Yeah, it could be an FDA violation. Frog puppet says. Yeah, so we're gonna have to have our finger on the trigger uh, uh, there. Yeah. Okay, let's see. So, uh, episode 14, what the heck are we doing here? Uh, let's see. We have these show notes that I, I put out, you know, moments before to try to get everything uh, organized. So, so what we're going to do today, um, we're going to do all of our normal stuff. We're going to go around the horn, talk about what we've been, what we've picked up, what we've been working on, what's going on in arcades, what's going on in our channels. Uh, and then the main topics for this evening, we'll actually go back and reintroduce Chance just a little bit. Uh, if you haven't seen him before, maybe you missed the episodes that he's been on in the past. We'll dive into the psyche that is this individual and get a little bit of uh, you know origin story from him, and then we'll really dive into the the, the meat and potatoes of the episode. Yeah, get ready uh, for some horror stories. We'll dive into the the main entree for this evening, which is uh, game hardware and all the different options when it comes to game hardware. Whether you're running original stuff or some sort of hardware or software emulation or multi boards or custom ROMs or high scores save kits or multi kits or whatever. We'll dive into all that, the pros and cons and uh, all that sort of stuff. And of course, we'll uh, talk about any sort of things that you guys uh, want to hear about. You know, ask us questions, leave comments in the live chat. Uh, if you're watching this live, of course, if you're not watching this live, hey, you can leave a comment on the uh, on the YouTube video, the rebroadcast, and maybe we can answer it uh, next time. Uh, and if you're listening to the uh, the um, the audio version on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts, thanks. We do a video version of this podcast too, live once a month, and then the video is always on YouTube as well. So uh, awesome. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, people have been commenting on your shirt, Chance, thinking that it was a Grinkfest uh, shirt, but it's an actual, actual Atari Warlords uh, t-shirt. Not that logo turned into a Grinkfest shirt. Yeah, but I, I made it. I actually made like. So we're gonna have to report you to the authorities. Yeah, we copyright I not in the United States. Like the yeah, like sue me, like come come at me. I this is fact, America, dude. Yeah, well, uh, this isn't <laughs> the land of lawsuit. <laughs> in this square, Atari's it's been active on Kalov recently. Well, yeah, actually, you're not wrong. So, uh, fun fun fact, um, Atari from this generation, like, they don't seem to care. Whoever owns the rights for it. Like, when Josh and I are working on a, a, a film or a TV show and we, we need to get the licensing rights for a game to be shown on camera, usually Atari, beyond a certain year, they don't care. They don't want to charge you or anything, which is awesome. So, anyway, I, I have a cricket... It was a COVID buy during the lockdown and I started like pressing my own shirts. So if you ever see something like an arcade game shirt from a company on here, it's because I thought it would look cool on a shirt and I made it. See, Chance, my hypothesis is you're on a list of people to sue. They just haven't gotten all the way down to you yet. So I'm on a flight risk go. list. If there, there you go. <laughs> all right. So let's uh, let's kick it off. Let's get right into it. Uh, we'll do our standard updates. Like I said uh, at the beginning. 
Uh, again, uh, if you want us to mute chances, Mike, feel free to leave a super chat and we will cut him right off. Uh, so first we'll talk about recent pickups. What games have you been picking up? What you've gotten? What's new in your uh, game room? That sort of thing. And uh, we'll go first to Liam from Retrobotics, who has a new acquisition just over his shoulder. Ooh. Two of them, actually. So, yes, the, the Qbert was very early in March. Uh, we picked this thing up, and it is lovely. Absolutely in love with this machine. <laughs> we were literally playing it for almost an hour earlier today. It's running its original board set, but it actually has the Mike Doyle 10-in-1 inside as well. So it can play cubes and in sector and faster, harder, more challenging Qbert, all those fun things. When we got it, it didn't have a correct joystick. It had some awful micro switch thing, but we got lucky and uh, managed to get a original joystick for it, as well as the original red buttons, which were mentioned in uh, Charlie's Discord chat. So it is back to how it should be. So we have been really uh, enjoying playing it. The other one that we just picked up last weekend, drove all the way down to Tennessee for it, and met with uh, beautiful Cameron, is this absolutely gorgeous solar fox back there. It is probably the most stunning machine that we have ever picked up. It is beautiful on the sides, beautiful on the front, and has all the correct artwork and the mirror. The only thing wrong with it is that it has this awful GRS joystick. It's like from an arcade one up. It doesn't have the real Solar Fox stick. But good news, everyone. I have the original Solar Fox panel, another one, a spare control panel complete with the joystick sitting in the front room. So all it needs is uh, new grips and it should be fine. So do you not need this? Not micro switch anymore. for me then oh okay well then you I got the leaf switches too yeah really I, someone actually sent me one um someone sent me wow. one. On, uh, on we were talking just, about this yesterday you got it that fast someone just sent me one they just said hey you want one oh. here tracking number no i'm surprised that your postal service is that fast oh, oh no it <laughs> hasn't arrived yet the micro switch but uh, oh <laughs> the joystick well, is and, here and, and i wonder i wonder so so both of these pickups, Liam, uh, when you got them, they had the wrong joystick, right? Yeah. And Cuber is awful to play without the correct joystick, right? Especially, like, did they even have it, like, oriented properly? or It, it was... was properly oriented, but it was okay. an eight-way. So it made oh. Kubert basically impossible to play because you'd be trying to go somewhere and Cuber would just be, no, nah, yeah. I'm just going to jump off the pyramid now. Now, and, actually, and... go ahead. Solar Fox is worse than Qbert with the wrong joystick. I would really? Say. Why is that? We haven't even been playing it um, because of how bad the joystick is. Mm. It's just so twitchy, this, this GRS joystick. I don't know what it was really marketed for. I think one-up upgrades or something. Yeah. But it's, it's, uh, it's not great, and it's very well, difficult to play with. Yeah, and we got uh, Chance's keyboard is so loud. Please, somebody pay to, for us to, to mute him. Um, is it really loud? The, it is really loud. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. With the, I'll... With, it's okay. With Don't the uh, yeah, we'll new guy. Was, for hours. Everybody, it's his first day. Give the guy a break. Okay, it's his first day, right? Um, with the with the um, with the the Solar Fox, uh, the the leaf switches, right? So you you know obviously four way four leaf switches. You had three of the correct ones, but you were missing one that was the exact right one. And it was this sort of Bally Midway kind of specific thing where it had the leads yes. on the side instead of the end. And, and so would, it, would a normal one – exactly. And would a would a normal one not fit or would it have the wrong kind of like resistance to it or what, what made sure that so that important? I'm sure that you could finagle a normal one to fit. And I had identified two leaf switches which could be stacked – to create a similar effect um, with the one that was supposed to be there. But, well, we have a penchant for originality and I really would want to have a matching micro leaf switch because I would I think if you had the wrong one or at least one that didn't match, you'd experience different resistance when moving around the uh, the stick. You'd probably feel it in, in gameplay and that would drive me absolutely batty. Yeah. Um, but it was... Interesting to me to see how completely unobtainable that 
particular leaf switch was given that it was used in so many midway games i mean all pac-man family but, had that but stick was it though because like we we spent probably like what well, what k you counted what 119 messages on discord yeah. back and forth the other day yeah, that's yeah, just under 200 oh just under 200 191 okay. i think oh okay yeah i'm sorry we <laughs> we th this is not the same leaf at all no but it is the same on pac-man and miss pac-man junior pac-man uh tron solar fox Gorf uses an optical stick, so even though it has the same shell, it doesn't actually use leaf switches. Okay, noted. Sorry. This is what I learned wow. reading through manuals. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, because like legitimately, I was just going to throw these in the mail and send them to you, because uh, I don't, I don't need four. I just need two. But if they're the wrong ones, then screw well, I'm, I'm very thankful to uh, Milestar on uh, on Kayla for sending me uh, the correct leaf switch so looking forward to getting here this weekend so we can put that solar fox back together sweet and though and those are two awesome pickups these were ones that were you know very very high on your vaps for both you and sam uh yes. and in particular solar fox i know you had passed up like a cocktail and some so you maybe missed out on some other like cubert like multiple times <laughs> so the fact they that you finally got yeah. these yeah. Both difficult yeah. to get, and Kubert in particular was very hard for us to, to get a hold of one, but we, we got very lucky, uh, and it has a spare soundboard in it too, so if anything happened to the speech, we can we can just go ahead and swap the other. And Solar Fox, yes, we did pass up on a cocktail, despite how much we love cocktails here, um, and that's because of the artwork. Uh, I think part of the best, the best feature that Solar Fox has is its multi-stage mirror. I have not seen another game quite like it. It features a blacklight cardboard bezel, as well as a mirror piece in the back, which has artwork on it, and a transparent glass in the uh, center stack that also has artwork on it. So you get a very deep looking cabinet when you look on it head on. And and the the pickup story here was kind of interesting too because it was one of those uh, people helping people kind of situations, yes. right? Yes. So the the game was actually in Tennessee, um, and it would have been a ten and a half hour one way drive if we Ooh. had gone to get it ourselves, which had actually precluded us getting it for a while. We had been tracking this game on Craigslist for over a month. Um, just looking at it and watching the price go down. But we just couldn't think of a feasible way for us to go and pick it up. But then, I believe it was you, Charlie, you had the idea to talk with uh, Cameron. And he was able to go pick up the game for us and held on to it for about a month. At which point I drove over to Charlie's, picked up a game for Cameron, his World Series countertop and then drove down to meet him roughly halfway in Bristol, Tennessee, at which point we swapped so, the games at a parking lot. So I like to traffic in favors, right? <laughs> totally legal ones above board, right? Uh, but I was helping out. And th so you got to rewind like a series of people helping people here. So uh, Russell, Russell Penner, Overtime Arcade, channel member, buddy of mine. I haven't seen him in the live chat uh, this evening. Um Really awesome guy. He's been a very generous supporter of the of the channel. Uh, he, you know, saw my. Uh, he's like, I think he loves penguins, right? And so he really liked my pingo restoration, which is right over here. Uh, and uh, so he really wanted to get a pingo. He saw one available for a great price on Clove in Pennsylvania, uh, and asked me, and I was happy to pick it up for him. And because I go back and forth between D.C. and New York all the time, picked it up in Pennsylvania, uh, had it in my garage for a little bit. And then, you know, we're trying to like, you know, breadcrumb this out to Colorado where uh, uh, where Russell lives. So I had to go to Nashville for work. So I drove it to Cameron's and Cameron held on to it for like a week or two. And Dillweed Taylor from Indianapolis, uh, he came down to Nashville. He had to come down for something. He grabbed it and got it to Nashville, uh, got it to Indianapolis. And then we fastened all it uh, the rest of the way. But so. 
you know, in exchange for helping out uh, um, me with uh, holding on to Russell's game for a week or two, I picked up an empty gyrus on my way to Nashville as well. So I dropped off both of them at Cameron's house. So we're kind of, you know, getting the kind of, you know, the favor trading going back and forth. And then he, one of his grails was a World Series countertop, bar top, you know, uh, sort of thing. And he saw one for a great price in New Jersey on another one of my trips. So I grabbed that for him. And that's the one that you picked up and brought down to Tennessee. And then he ran down to Chattanooga and picked up your Solar Fox and brought that to Bristol. So, you know, wise man once said, people helping people is powerful stuff. So it mm. just go, goes to show you, everyone out there, make friends with people in the community, even if they don't live near you, you know, if they're within driving distance or something or whatever, you know, make friends with them, offer to help them out, send them a leaf switch if they need it, whatever. And they'll be typically more than willing to, uh, you know, return the favor. So it's really, it's really a great thing. A force multiplier, if you, if you will, uh, when this kind of stuff happens. Can I, add, can I amend that a little bit? Sure. I agree with that completely, but, but bonus points, if you make friends with someone who has a truck or a van. That's right, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Or trailer or something. Or trailer or or uh, whatever Josh used to own that we used to travel with games all the time. An, an empty storage unit. Chevy. Yeah. Oh, and here we go. Breaking news. Uh, Jerry Voluptuous, speaking of very generous supporters of the channel and the podcast, Jerry Voluptuous with a $999 million Super Chat donation. Jerry just made a home in time for some coin jam. We got Jerry's pizza box going on right there. And we can go ahead and for $999 million, that's going to mute Chance for a long, long time. So sorry, Chance. Uh, we're not going to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let's stay on the topic of pickups uh, and we will skip right over Chance and go to Kay. So Kay is always wheeling and dealing. You know, what have you been picking up lately, uh, Kay? What's been coming and going? What's what's new at Prime Arcade? Well, I picked up quite a few new projects in the last week or two, which if you are subscribed to my TikTok or YouTube, you already know about. And if you aren't, then what's wrong with you? But I'll go through the list. Uh, I picked up an ice cold beer, an original Taito ice cold beer, um, a Miss Pac cocktail. Actually, it's a Pac Man cocktail, but it has a Miss Pac Man in it. Uh, an upright centipede, which means I've got three of them in the shop now. I'm, I'm just becoming a, a centipede merchant. A pair of Time Crisis 3s, uh, one of which plays blind, the other one seems to work just fine. A sit-down Daytona USA 2. A versus Hogan's Alley in a Unisystem cabinet that's fully working. A baby Pac-Man, which has a sync issue in the monitor, but everything else seems to be fine. An NFL Blitz 99. I guess that's everything. Um, I am currently working... Uh, I'll get to that later, but um, I've been telling people that I don't take on new repair jobs anymore simply because I'm too backlogged, uh, but I do have a, a local store that I've been doing some work for that went ahead and brought me some more stuff anyway. So they brought me a Phoenix, uh, Pac-Man Cabaret, Space Invaders, Donkey Kong Jr., and a $6 million man pinball machine. Uh, so those have been added to the very back of that pile. And it's probably going to be about a year before I can get to that stuff for them. But um, even though I keep telling people I don't take on new repair jobs, somehow that pile keeps growing. I mean, there is this thing called money that can be exchanged for goods and services, I hear. Yes, but um, <laughs> there's a section of my shop offer that's nothing but repairs for other people. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. See, that's a market opportunity, right? Yeah. So one, yeah. <laughs> that tells me you should probably be increasing your, your prices in general. And two, you should probably offer a special uh, uh, rush premium sort of deal where if you want to jump I, the queue. I had thought about that. I don't really want to do that. I really just prefer to repair things in the order that they were brought to me. I don't really want to ask for extra money uh, to, to be able to jump ahead in the queue. I, I know that some people do that. I don't I don't really like that. So I'm just going to stick to doing things in the order that they are brought. Um, it, I don't want to say it's like predatory, but it, I, I just don't like that practice. So I'm, I'm not going to be doing that. But mostly I'm just telling people, sorry, you know, I, I can't take on your repair. If you want to sell it to me as is, or if you want to trade it in as is towards another purchase, I can do that. But I don't really want to take on any more repairs. Well, um, maybe that's maybe that's what you need to do. You need to have massive inventory of like have one of every uh popular game working 
so that instead of dropping them off to be repaired and waiting, they're basically just trading them in towards a working game, right? Like, like think about what games you have are the most popular that come in, you know, Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, Centipede, whatever, Centipede. right? Like, think, and, and say, hey, zero weight on uh, Centipede repairs, right? Yeah. Fix all three of them, have them ready. And if somebody brings in a Centipede, you just give them a working Centipede. You, you can say charge a premium or you can say like, wait. So I don't seem to have much luck with people bringing in machines that I've already got in the project pile. It seems to be stuff that I don't have. So, mm. um, the other the other thing that's been happening is uh, I've been teaching my girlfriend how to do uh, how to install cap kits, and so she has successfully installed three new cap kits. She did a Vision Pro, like an MTG 1901 or whatever that one is, uh, a K4900 and a K7000. So she successfully did those and. Uh, Reinstalled so, them and they didn't blow up. They so look great. She's and and I think she's she's in the live chat. Yes, she she's is. successfully done three. How many has she unsuccessfully done? She has not blown up a single capacitor from installing good. the backwards. Good, good. I'll I had to write that I'm down. Kidding. I literally <laughs> had to write that down as a note, like teach wife to solder. Well, I, I mean, there's I mean. Uh, Liam and Sam have that sort of partnership going on. They build stuff together. They work on stuff together. I know uh, Charles Klein, you know, channel member, uh, him and his wife make reproduction harnesses together. So, you know. And uh, uh, I know, Liam, you look like you're about to chime in. But real quick, we have another $200 million Super Chat donation, this time from Stringer Films, saying two live streams in two days. What is it, Christmas? And, and, and Matt is referring to on Wednesday, I did my monthly members only live stream, uh, which is always a blast, you know, really unfiltered. One of the things that we do there is we have the Discord voice chat piped into the live stream so people can actually like join the live stream and chat and whatever. I do have to cut some microphones there. Sometimes people get out of hand. And so we'll, we'll put uh, a chance on mute for uh, a little bit longer because of that donation. So thank you, Matt. And uh, yeah, so uh, Kay, anything else going on? Anything uh, um, you know popping over a Prime Arcade in addition to any of that? For the most part, just keep an eye out for the videos on repairing the things that I just said. Check me out on TikTok and YouTube, and you'll see those videos. Yeah, and you've been doing more on YouTube, which has been great too. I mean, you've yeah, already dominated to, uh, TikTok. I'm trying to just cross post the the videos that I do on TikTok over to YouTube, but I do them without captions and background music. And for one, I do that because if I ever do get some kind of following on YouTube, there's going to be that whole monetization issue with the background music and copyrights and things like that. But mostly it's just because for the people that occasionally do complain that like maybe the background music is too loud and they can't hear what I'm saying, or they really just want a more organic experience where it's just me talking, I can direct them to the YouTube and be like, well, just watch this because I don't have any of that extra stuff. It's just me talking. That's all you get. Yeah, and, and just in case it actually TikTok gets – banned uh permanently in the u.s you'll have a backup option uh and an audience ready to go there so good stuff and yeah make I'll, sure i'll still be popular in china but uh for my american audience you're, you're gonna have to go see it on youtube there you I'm go sorry, and, and... james we can't hear you you've been you, we paid to mute you oh sorry well i, I think his uh time out is over or what is <laughs> yeah. it the uh uh, uh penalty box for this is uh, like at a wedding audience. where people like clink the glasses but with money um there you go you you won't be popular in china because china tiktok is not regular tiktok china it's TikTok regulated is, no it, it's completely different tiktok it's uh right. chi yeah china tiktok is like educational and it has time limits to it and it's not at all like the tiktok that we have in north yeah. america i'm yeah, super yeah. educational and i don't do any dances so i don't see why i wouldn't be popular it's a different you know, app yeah it's and, not the same app uh -huh. And you're also not a member of the Chinese Communist Party, so you also wouldn't get a pass. I might be. You don't know. What are you, a cop? <laughs> <laughs> um, but they, they're called Mounties in Canada. Yeah, yeah. RCMP, GRC for the French. But you, you know what? I, I'll be honest with you. I'm thankfully that you're on. I'm very thankful that you're on YouTube because we don't have TikTok in this house. We literally have TikTok banned in this house on our network. I got no follow up for that. So thank you for finally going onto YouTube. So you're not supporting the homie. I see. That's all I heard. Well, no, I just don't. We don't have to, like, it's a problem in our house. It was like we were both like the wife and I were both doom scrolling all the time. So I'm like, 
I'm just banning all the TikTok addresses I can on the like on our router. Like you, it, friends come over with their kids and they try to like go on TikTok on our network and they're like, why isn't it working? I'm like, well, let me tell so now you. You're just, well, let you're me just, tell you, get your kids out. That's why. Yeah. So you, <laughs> get, you're you're scrolling YouTube <laughs> shorts and Instagram stories now, right? Yeah. There you go. So, yeah. Okay. Well, on that note, uh, now that chance is out of the penalty box, unless another super chat donation comes in. I mean, I gotta, I gotta stand by my word. Uh, <laughs> what's uh, what's been going on in the Canadian arcade? What have you been picking up? What's what's new in the game room? That sort of thing. Well, uh, you're gonna hate this question every time you ask it to me. Um, I haven't been picking up anything, and actually, I, I don't pick up too much anymore. Um, for That's what Jeremiah who... said, and we we know what happened to him. Yeah, fair. Um, but I mean, honestly, like I, I have a. I had I had a short list uh, of games, and the only game that is left on my short list now is an ice cold beer. And uh, so, other than that, I've pretty much collected everything that I really want to collect. Yeah, hey, another guy that's got one of those. Yeah, right. And, and you know, you got it for a good price. So, might mm, anyway. No one needs to know that price. I didn't say. I didn't, I didn't say price. I'm just saying. I, I know what you, I'm. I'm. I'll pay you fair value. But uh, actually, I might wait for a repro. One of the repros. Uh, anyway, those so, those won't be cheap. We'll get into that later in the discussion. Let's talk about that, yeah. Because um, I think I got a, I think I got an angle on that. Um, but those people who know me or know what I collect, that I, I I only bring things into my collection if it's something I absolutely want to have or something I think that I can maybe put on location because I need a spare cabinet, um, or it's something that I know like a buddy of mine might want. So like we we go out and we go get it. But normally, like I don't really bring too many games in. So I, I've pretty much got down to the end of that list with the exception of ice cold beer still being the one that I don't have. However, I know we were talking about Grinkfest in the chat when Josh and Cody and I were there at Grinkfest seven, seven was the last one, seven. Yeah. Um, I have a poster on the wall. Um, I made a new short list. And so I've kind of been pulling games off of that, but un unfortunately those games are like unobtainium, like tail gunner. Like, is a tail gunner going to show up in, in like nowhere, Alberta? Like, I don't think so. Maybe. Uh, I, we, we honestly, and I, I mean weird this things in, show up in Canadian warehouses. I, but I mean this with the most sincerity possible. I have a better chance of getting a sheriff upright cabinet because we know there were three or four of them here in Alberta that got converted. Mm -hmm. And I know that because I have parts from them sitting down in my collection. So, as far as what I've added, probably not much um what i'm working on right now i guess is your sorry i'm new no would you pick up would what did pick i pick up, up? And, and did you finish anything put in the game room oh what? my okay. god read the notes i oh yeah there's the yeah so i i did get something kind of finished and i brought a prop uh it's not completely done yet but this is the conversion board for my Skyskipper. So I've been waiting six years to finish six this. Six long pattern. years. Six years. Anyone who complains about RAM controls or artwork being late, no. Six years. So we finally have these. We finally have the build instructions, the whole nine. Uh, my buddy Jeff and I sat down in my basement this morning for like five, six hours. And we started going through the instructions to finish this. And then we got to the part where we have to burn proms. And he's like, oh, I didn't read the instructions. I don't have a prom burner. So now I've got to order. I got to go talk to Mike or my buddy Andre and get some proms made. So th this is this is the only thing stopping me. But then my Sky Skipper will be done. Um, other than that, I have an announcement to make. Uh -oh. I, I got Tapper Tap Handles. Real ones? Yeah. Well, not, not, not 3D printed? Not 3D printed. They're oh, not carved out of balsa wood? No, no, no. Okay, so uh, anyone who's on Clove knows that a few days ago, I got really fed up, and I was like, I made a thread. I'm like, why aren't these things being recreated anymore? Like, whoever does is going to make bank. And that started this, like, chain reaction of people like, you know, oh, you should 3D print them. And anyway... And then but, Chance insulted all 3D printing uh, enthusiasts in the world, lumping them in with, you know, vegans, vegans. and cult members. No, and no, crossfitters. no. Crossfitters. Cult, 
some cult members are get get a pass. But <laughs> listen, if you're really insulted by that, give us a super chat donation. We can uh, we can we'll just chance cut his mic. Say things I'm about. In um. <laughs> so okay, so to get back on topic, I I by posting that that thread in the group or in the like the general chat, I had two separate people within an hour reach out to me and go, hey, like. I was in on the last round of, of the good reproductions, the injection molded reproductions for the tap or tap handles. And so literally paid, paid the money this morning, got the tracking. I sent him a, um, a UPS because I save a ton on UPS because like dealing with you guys over the border, shipping over the border, I'm sorry, is a nightmare. And like it, it just it works so much better for us in Canada if we can just send you a label. Then you don't have to have that will not, you know, ship only, will I'll only ship within the contiguous United States. Like the, how many states is it? 48 states. You won't ship to even 57. your buddies in 57. Yeah. You won't, but you won't, you won't ship to your buddies in Alaska or Hawaii or Puerto Rico, I think it is. Puerto Rico Last or state. American Samoa or yeah. Guam. Yeah. So what about DC? Do you ship to Washington, DC? I won't even ship to the next town over. So oh, fair. Okay. But anyway, so I, I sent him a label this morning, um, paid him, paid him the money. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to lie, paid a premium for him, but I paid him what he paid for them. And to me, that was worth it um, to get, to get that tapper done. So it's not just an empty cabinet sitting in our dining room. Um, to me, getting that game finished is, is worth it. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's my other, basically it's, it's, going to be done soon well so some people do ship to canada mm -hmm. i for example am selling a bunch of uh, parts right now to fund some uh, uh an expensive project we'll talk about in a minute I'm, i haven't nobody from uh outside of the continental u.s has purchased anything from me yet i'll ship anywhere in the world i've shipped stuff to norway before right usually they have to walk me through the process which is fine right but especially if they want to just like send me send me the um, uh, uh, the label, right? Heck, I'll do whatever, right? I'll slap it on a box, throw throw that box at the uh, UPS driver. Good to go, man. Well, so this is this is my my hot tip. If you are Canadian or if you're American and you want to send anything across the border ever, and you've got PayPal already, use NetParcel. NetParcel is integrated with PayPal. It, it connects to your PayPal. You actually log in with your PayPal address. It's like pp.netparcel.com. Hmm. And you save like 70, 80% on shipping. So just as an example. better than Pirate Ship? Uh, I don't know. I haven't tried Pirate Ship. But I know it's better Pirate than... Pirate Ship is really good. Well, I know it's better than ShipStation. So if you know anything yeah. about e-commerce or like... Because that, that yeah. was my old life was like marketing and e-commerce setups. ShipStation is brutal but net parcel is amazing so like for for me to send something anywhere in the world is like 80 percent off and it's like five day ups you know nice. three day tracked ups and with the exception of one shipment so that um uh what was that that nba jam kit that i sold a mm. couple of weeks ago yeah uh, or no no it wasn't that it was i sold a i i converted an uh, an n64 to have hdmi on it and i shipped that to somewhere in Europe and uh, Germany, I think it was. And it got held for like 10 days at the border. But I, other than that, I've never had a problem. So get net parcel. If you're Canadian and you want to buy something from an American who said like, oh, we don't ship out of the States because the people just don't want to deal with the, the, the weighing or the, or any of that. So you just say like, tell me how big the box is. Tell me what your address is. Give me your phone number and address for customs. I fill out the, the board I, or the, the, label i pay for it on my end i send you a, a a little document a pdf you print it out stick it on the box i can have ups come to your door and pick it up or you can drop it off at the ups location and it's done so i dig it i dig it i mean and and that sounds like uh pirate ship um mm -hmm. like i've been shipping a lot of marquees which tend to be expensive because they're oversized on one dimension right so uh, uh but pirate ship i think most of the like it's and it shows you like hey retail this would have been like 37 dollars to ship but instead it's nine dollars mm. um so pretty good and uh yeah the more the more beers chance gets in him the more likely he is to get his microphone cut but uh well okay so 
We'll switch over uh, to me. So recent pickups for me. Um, I did a video. I showed uh, the dual pickup. I think I was alluding to it last time. Uh, this was uh, a second Outrun Mini that actually was running Turbo Outrun. And I got a, uh, a one-slot Neo Geo and a Bally Sente cabinet. Uh, the plan with that one is to restore it back to a uh, Chicken Shift, which is a lot of fun if you've never played oh. Chicken Shift before. It is the best game that's played with only two buttons. It's awesome. I think um, the control panel on that uh, had been Trivial Pursuit at one time, which is not a great game. Trivial Pursuit is not a great arcade game, despite what some people might say. Uh, and then I did a pickup video with, uh, and sorry, my voice is all messed up. It has nothing to do with the Macho Man. It's the, every every tree and everything is blooming right now in D.C. Uh, Chance is showing us his backyard. He's got like 12 feet of snow still, and in, in, uh, you know he's in the Arctic Circle in Alberta. Uh, but everything, like my neighbors were mowing their lawn uh, today. Everything's blooming here, and so I'm fighting fighting all that off. Uh, but yeah, so I did the, the 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 you know four pickups, but all those pickups were for other people. These weren't my games. So it was the uh, Sega Space Tactics uh, cockpit for uh, Dillweed for Taylor, overtime arcade channel member. I also got for him a Spacian, also known as Galaxy. That's like a really cool uh, uh, Galaxian uh, bootleg with just amazing, amazing artwork on the cabinet. Uh, I got the World Series countertop, the Cinematronics World Series bar top for um uh for cameron that we mentioned earlier and then i got a narc for my buddy uh lex out in um uh, uh missouri and chance you went black and white for a second there i don't know if you're messing with filters or trying um, to prank us or something brian said that i looked sunburnt and i realized that oh. the, i'm still trying to figure out my camera setup because i have a anyway sorry keep going sometimes you get sunburned in canada oh so dude like four Hours of sun a year, something like that. We, no, no, no. Do I need to educate people on how a sunburn actually works? The even though it's overcast, you can still get sunburnt. Okay, like I am a ginger. I am a day walking ginger. I burn. Okay, like, we believe you. <laughs> but it's different if you're in the pool, though, right? I you sympathize. Can't get I sympathize. Thank Everyone you. That. Thank you. Jeez. I burn as well, very easily. Right? It sucks. But we, we, we got, do have higher pain tolerances and like a thirst for blood. So it's fine. Like I'm cool with that. I don't think you should well, here. I want to give a shout out here to Scott Brockway, who's a new uh, a subscriber to my channel. He I think he's been going through all my old videos because I'm seeing him comment on older ones. Like he's been going through the joust restoration and like there's a spoiler, right? Because here's the restored joust over my, my shoulder here. Uh, but he asks, when are you going to restore one of those sun dances? That was a joke, Scott. I was being sarcastic. He was commenting on my armor attack pickup, which is right here. He's like, hey, that's an awesome game. Now you're going to get all the other you know, cinematronics vectors like um, uh, Sundance. And I'm like, oh, dude, that's an old video. I already have two Sundances, which is a joke. I do not own a Sundance. Uh, that was a joke, but uh, maybe maybe one day. Uh, but the way Sundances get uh, picked up is usually there's usually some controversy uh, with them. So in addition to all of those games, uh, I am working on a pickup video that's going to be released this weekend. And uh, this is really, really cool. Um, and, you know, all of you here watching or listening to this are, are getting a, a spoiler. This is a food fight that I picked up, but it's not just cool. any food fight. It's an Irish food fight. So this is an uh, this was built by Atari Ireland, sort of the Euro style cabinet, sort of a, you know, uh, uh, it's like a mega cabaret. So smaller than the full size um, it's been converted multiple times, uh, so it's going to be quite a quite an undertaking to restore this back to a food fight. Um, I was able to get a uh, a working food fight PCB that's in the mail on its way to me. Should be here maybe Monday or Tuesday, but I'm still going to need some uh, uh, need to track down a uh, let's see uh, a, a food fight joystick and you know a harness and a power brick and a um, AR204 variant. Um, so if you've got food fight parts, I'm the guy you want to talk to. And uh, I also picked up a game uh, that's uh, uh, intended to go to a buddy's arcade. That'll be a pickup video um, sometime next month, though. But that, I'm waiting on artwork uh, from uh, Galloping Ghost uh, for that one. Um, and then just segueing right into, because we're way, way, way behind. 
uh, projects that we're currently uh, working on. So I did fix the uh, the power supply for uh, the Jungle King. So that was the classic Taito, 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 Potato, Potato, whatever, uh, linear power supply. That, uh, that was such a beast. That took two whole weeks to fix that thing. Uh, huge shout out to uh, channel member uh, Kawaru. Uh, he was a brand new channel member, jumped right into the trenches, working with me for multiple hours on on Discord and like got uh, helped me uh, figure that out, got it all working. Um, and then last week's video, and people have been commenting on my my partial costume here. I'm not going to put the wig and sunglasses on. Um, but last week, uh, sort of for for WrestleMania, which is like like eight days away, um, I got a WWF Superstars uh, PCB from Jaybird Auctions. Um, got that working, needed to be cleaned, and did a. You know, my best uh, Macho Man Randy Savage uh, impression at the beginning called out basically every active uh, uh, content creator in the the arcade hobby uh, in that, in the little sort of like uh, Macho Man promo. And we already have our first uh, uh, person who has uh, done a response. So Operation Restore released a video, I think, late last night or early this morning, and uh, he did a Hulk Hogan impression uh, back in response. So thank you for that. So I'm waiting for the rest of everybody else, uh, to, uh, do a promo back. Why did you like call us out about my Mario brothers? Like out of all the games that I have that you've watched videos on, that was like two and a half years ago. I was trying to think of, you know, something you had done that, you know, we haven't seen an update on, uh, and like you hadn't like, right. Like you had like the pickup or whatever, and then didn't finish it. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Josh can tell me in the comments. Did we actually like say that we were going to do a follow-up video to that i can't remember wasn't there like a part one and then nothing else after that i don't know well maybe i'll have to go look you guys are busy in yeah. hollywood and getting all big time and stuff you know hey man we did that tempest restoration and as far as i'm concerned be happy with that because that took forever that was good that was good but like then the video was so short it was I, I don't, why I don't... you you gotta i want to make a video longer than seven minutes but I also don't want to make a video longer than I, I have a, like a personal thing where if I watch a YouTube video and oh, it's like Liam, longer than to 22 minutes. Sorry, Liam. So, so Josh is saying, there you go. But you do long yeah. videos too, Liam. Uh, yeah. Josh is saying though. So Josh from the Canadian arcade is saying uh, it was implied there'd be more. So you left oh. us hanging and Wayne oh uh, overtime arcade channel member said, uh, I don't remember seeing the end of the wide body. So there you go. And welcome, okay. Stephen. Welcome, Stephen. Okay, Waller. so you you know what we Josh, it's your fault. We're gonna do this now. We're gonna do a follow up of the wide body. There we go. In character, pick some tag team, the two of you guys, and do right yeah, like. Yeah, you should be the rockers, and then by the end of the video, you just super kick him through a window. Okay, so I'll be the tooth fairy, and Josh can be the Easter Bunny. Is that what you're saying? Something, something from. Oh yeah, wrestling's real. That's right. That's right. Hey, don't break kayfabe, buddy. Right? You, I, someone I who also, uh, is a trained professional wrestler, yeah, that's absolutely real. But but you can lean into the Canadian thing and be like the Heart Foundation, right? Yeah, they would sue the living crap out of us. Like those guys are litigious as. I like, this is no literally idea. this is a licensed WWF or WWE. Sorry, this is a licensed WWE no. costume. No, no, no. Right. Show your age. We say WWF. We're old enough to say WWF. It was the WWF. So anyway, in addition to the the superstars uh, PCB, another thing I've been doing is prepping uh, a bunch of games that I'm going to be loaning to my buddy Mark, uh, who runs uh, Back to the Media. Uh, uh, which is a store in Winchester, Virginia, sells used games, uh, uh, records, uh, comic books, that sort of thing. You've heard me talk about this. He's building a uh, arcade in the back room. He's been making a ton of progress, hoping to open up. Hopefully next month, it might might go into May. I've been trying to get him to do a, a soft launch. I'm going to let him borrow a bunch of my sort of garage games. Some of them need cap kits, whatever. They're all working games. So like the um, uh, the Superman's going to go there and the... the um, Sly Spy is going to go there, and then probably the, the Neo Geo is going to go there for a little bit. And I did pick up another game that I'm going to basically be restoring and, and selling to him. So that's been a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, let's go back around the horn. Uh, projects that you're currently uh, working on. Uh, first, Liam. Not much, actually, right now. 
once the solar fox joystick is done it just becomes maintenance hmm. just keeping things alive yeah i mean i've got a cap kit i want to do on uh on the space stool i'm sitting at right now and i still have that experiment i want to run with major havoc but nothing in here yet knock on wood is broken so it's just a case of fixing that joystick and getting that game operational i'd like to put a original uh, midway d power supply back in it but i don't have one on hand i'll have to find one so it sounds like uh, you and and k can potentially scratch each other's backs right because k's got a warehouse you know overflowing with games that need to be fixed you're seemingly running out of games to fix so Okay, why don't you load up a uh, a container and send it to Maryland and let uh, let Liam knock him out and send him back to you? How about you just commute down here and just make it easier? Because uh, I've got to work finish, so. it's, a, it's a bit of a commute. What is that drive time? Just out of curiosity, uh, I would guess at least twenty hours. Yeah, that sounds twenty bad. hours. And is that imperial or metric hours? Uh, uh, that nautical. Would be, uh, nautical hours. <laughs> That's <laughs> nautical hours. Hey, the Imperial system got us to the moon. Dude, dude, the guy, this is the best thing ever. Sorry to interject. The guy who sold me the, the tapper tap handles, he sent me all of the stuff for the box and the weight in metric. And he was like, he's down in Oklahoma. And he's like, he's like, hey, um, I just want you to know I was like an engineer and I used to work on Volkswagens. So like, I, I, I know you're Canadian. So I just wanted to do a, you a favor. I'm like, I could have done it in <laughs> Met in Imperial. <laughs> There you go. Hey, man. Uh, cool. So, uh, Kay, what about you? What's what's on the workbench right now? Are you going to get to that ice cold beer? What's the story? Eventually. Um, on, on the same note as uh, Liam coming down here to commute to work on stuff, I was just talking with someone that was messaging my page and he's wanting a pole position. I was like, oh, I mean, I've got a lot of projects in the shop, but I don't have any pole positions. And he's like, well, uh, there's a there's a couple in Ohio. What are the chances of you getting those? I'm like, well, it's about 1,300 miles away, so pretty low. So uh, I don't think people really understand how, the, how far away from everybody I am, but especially from the Midwest. I'm, I'm not going to go just pop on up to Ohio and pick up a couple of busted pole positions. It's not really worth the commute there. Well, um, and you're, you're not just in Texas. You're in kind of a remote part of Texas. I'm in West Texas, so even if you think yeah. about the major towns in Texas, I'm – 300 miles from any of those. So uh, I just drove, I drove to Dallas and back earlier this weekend, and it's about five hours one way. So that's pretty much if we want to drive that? anywhere to anywhere in Canada, is like five hours away. So, like, there's really only one road, right? There's the Trans Canada yeah. Highway, and yeah. then there's exits into the US, right? Pretty much. That road is the most boring road I have ever driven. Do you, do you want me to the beep you out? But. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I drove that road and got stuck with an overturned tractor trailer and learned in the worst of ways that there is no way around if that road mm -hmm. is blocked. So the fun fact, if if you're traveling from one side of Canada to the other, if you're going to like Ontario um, or like, sorry, central Canada, which is Ontario, I didn't mean to. Um, if you're going that way through Manitoba, by the way, I could show you on a map, but look it up um that part of the trans canada highway canadians don't even drive on it most of the time we actually go down like pre-covid we would go down through the united states <laughs> through detroit which was safer and go out through like windsor than it was to go through that part of the trans canada highway i would rather go to flint michigan and detroit than to drive on the trans canada well the thing, I right, like if all you're... the way east to west and it was it was a it was a trip Wow. It's like, if, and, and if you're in Detroit and you want to go to Canada, you go south. He's more right? Canadian than I am now. There you go. How many how many Timmies are along the way? If you went the entire length of the, the TCH, how many Timmies? How many Tim I have no idea, but I can tell you there are a ton of pine trees along the way. Nothing mm -hmm. but pine trees. Yep. No Buckies, though. Okay. No Buckies, no buckies at all. No Buckies. Pine trees. Enough I'm Canada not... talk. This is K time. Yeah. <laughs> so, Go back to K. Go back to Texas. I want to hear more about Texas. So uh, I did part one on uh, a Star Trek pin and a Matahari pin. Uh, nice. There's the beaver right there. Um, 
there's not a for, for people listening to the audience. This is a family show. <laughs> yeah, there's a beaver right there. All right, we'll uh, we'll edit that out and post. Oh um, man, everyone talks about buckies. There's not one within 300 miles of me. Oh. There are no buckies anywhere near here. Anyway, uh, so part two of the God, we're getting off topic so much. Part wow. two of the Star Trek and Matahari Pen uh, videos are going to be coming soon. I'm I'm just now finishing up the Star Trek. It's already done. I basically have to like adjust a flipper and then put it back together. Um, and then the Matahari is next in line after that. Uh, the Blitz and the Hogan's Alley that I picked up recently. Um, I just finished recapping the monitor on the Blitz. Uh, it still has a sync issue I need to fix. And then I replaced some lights and it's done. And then the Hogan's Alley, I basically am just going to recap the monitor for uh, preventative maintenance. I need to put a bezel on it because the cardboard bezel is just completely torn apart. And um, and then it's done. Uh, it has a uh, it doesn't have the original like Nintendo revolver in that cabinet. Um, whenever that I, I worked on it many years ago, I ended up buying it from the guy I worked on it for, but, uh, the gun was completely missing. So I just, uh, I put an adapter in there and just a generic cat 45 and that worked just fine. Uh, so that's still on there. Um, once I get those done, uh, I think my next projects are going to be a blackout and a Mr. And Mrs. Pac-Man pinball machine. Those are the, I think those are the next two in line, uh, in the repair queue for other people. Uh, which I've what? never worked on a Mr. and Mrs. Pac-Man before. Well, and, and I was just going to ask you, are those difficult to fix? But maybe you don't know if you've not worked say, on I, I've never worked on one. Um, I've I've looked inside one that I, one of my customers had and played around with a little bit. But this is my first time to actually get one in for repair and having to, to get it going. So uh, that'll be new to me. But um, for the most part, valleys, valleys aren't too hard to work on. So I'm, I'm sure it's not going to be too different, too different from any of the other ones of that era. Well, uh, I, I've had uh, issues with uh, Bally stuff. Uh, the traces are too thin. The the schematics are wrong often. Like they make mistakes all the time. Typos. Um, you know, if you if you go and you watch, um, I think it was the Insert Coin uh, documentary. It was kind of like the the. It was really telling the later story of Williams and how Williams ended up buying uh, uh, you know Bally Midway. And then Midway became like Williams Corporations, like WMS uh, Co. It became their like video game brand. And Williams was just being used for uh, pinball. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of shade being thrown by the Williams engineers at the uh, Bally Midway engineers, sort of saying, you know, basically implying that, you know, those were they that was they were definitely the JV uh, when it came to, you know, uh, rigor and engineering discipline and whatever. And if you look at some of the the you know the design choices and and you can kind of even see it in the in the cabinets williams maybe sometimes is a bit over engineered mm -hmm. um but i would always much rather work on williams stuff than than valley midway stuff you say with valley is usually um the the all tech replacements for mpus are fantastic and so i usually end up throwing one of those in there because half the time they never removed the battery from the board, and so all that corrosion is there and destroyed the grounds and all the traces and everything. Um, so I, I like to put an Alltech replacement in there because it's it's fairly inexpensive and it does the job. But then you still need to rebuild the connectors uh, going to that because you know those pins are corroded or they're just not making that good contact anymore. So even though you've got the new board, the original connectors are still kind of iffy. So those have to be rebuilt too. But usually once you've done that. Uh, if your rectifier board is still good, um, that's pretty easy to work on. That's, those also have fairly cheap or fairly inexpensive replacements. And then usually the solenoid driver board, lamp driver board, almost always, in my experience, are still working. And even if they're not, they're they're pretty uh, simple to repair. Um, so at, and once you've rebuilt the connectors and probably replaced the MPU, I feel like it's more or less bulletproof at that point. Hmm. Um, yeah. And they made so many of, of most of their games. But then they used those weird uh, leaf switches that Liam couldn't get a hand uh, a hold on. So, um, uh, in, the, uh, in the live chat, it says, have fun with Baby Pack Manual. Well, I don't read, so it's not going to be fun. <laughs> don't or can't, tell, be honest. I can, clearly. I read oh, okay. it. <laughs> I mean, I have, I have Siri read it to me, but. Oh. <laughs> I well, just had to check. And, and with that, I was just about to kick it over to Chance to talk about 
uh, what he's been working on. What is but muted for the next 10 minutes? Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, hold on. Well, un unfortunately, we've got a $999 million super chat donation from Ezekiel, the Chicago Retro Ranger, who is another really, really generous supporter of the podcast and the channel. Ezekiel says, what's up, fellas? Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, Ezekiel. Thank you for your support. And uh, I guess Chance is going to be talking to himself for a while. It looks like he's learning sign language. We're going to have to bleep all that out. But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll take you out of the penalty box early. We'll say that uh, somebody scored a goal. So we got to empty. See, I know hockey. We empty the penalty box. Everyone comes back out. All the goons come out. So uh, Chance, what have you been working on lately? What's on your workbench? Uh, other than, well, now we've got all the parts I need for the tapper. So they're on their way. Um, and then the skyskipper that we're, we're finishing up. So that'll be kind of done, uh, very, very soon. And then I have an Eldorado, uh, pinball machine sitting downstairs on a rotisserie, uh, that anyone who's watched any of our videos knows it went on the rotisserie about five years ago. Um, and so now it's kind of like, I have to get it out of the way cause I want to get it finished. And, uh, yeah, so it's basically, I think the Eldorado pins up next and, uh, I have a nibbler. Well, I have a, a Rockola Fantasy upright sitting in the garage. Uh, so that'll probably become a nibbler or like a BitKit multi-board, which we'll talk about more about BitKit and whatnot in a bit. Rock and roll. And we'll keep it going with you. We'll stay with you and go to our last sort of regular update question. Uh, mm. What's coming in the future, right? So if you guys haven't noticed this pattern, right, these questions are basically past, present, and future, right? What oh. have you worked on since the last podcast? What are you working on right now? What are you planning on working on until the next podcast? So uh, upcoming plans, any videos you got coming out soon, any parts you're looking for, that kind of stuff. Okay, so uh, videos that we're working on, and Josh is going to hate me for bringing this up, but we have uh, a Skyskipper update video that we're working on. Um, we have a BitKit video that we are working on. So uh, Aaron, uh, Crafty Mech, was nice enough to, uh, to throw us a couple of BitKits. Uh, to do like a full like unboxing and review on that. So we're going to do like how we normally do our Canadian arcade take on, on boards and whatnot. Um, so we've got Josh is, you know, working on his right now and kind of going through it. Um, like Josh, he, like the other day he found a small bug in burger time and, and we're already working through that as part of like the video and, and how that works with Aaron. So it's really, really cool. Um, and then, Oh, there was something, Something else. Somebody asked in the chat earlier what we were going to do with the Grink Fest video. Um, like what happened to our truck because our truck broke down when we drove down there. I am sorry. Oh, did I tell you that? You told me. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're, uh, uh, off camera. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, so we we're gonna we we've got we've got a few videos in the pipeline that have kind of been sitting since COVID and since um since Josh and I started our Hollywood gigs. And so we, he had this great idea of doing a, um, uh, an, an archive or like a, what's in the Canadian arcade vault. And so like, we've got a tour of the old Jersey Jack factory, um, that I, I toured cause we know, we know Jack from Jersey Jack pinball. He's, he's a buddy of ours. And so we were down, Vanessa and I were in, uh, New York, uh, in 2018. So we got to tour the factory, but the audio wasn't that great. But now with AI, I can fix the audio. So that's kind of something on the on the horizon that we're hoping to get done. Um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome stuff. All right. And we'll go back in the reverse order. So we'll come back through K. Uh, what's next? What do you got planned? What content's in the hopper? What parts are you looking for? Well, I already mentioned uh, the Star Trek and Matahari Pan videos uh, should be coming up soon. Some of the uh, Blitz and, well, I'm not going to do a video on the Blitz. It's already done. I didn't film anything. Uh, but it was already working before I recapped it, so it'd basically be a before and after of me putting lights in the game. Uh, but uh, I I have mentioned uh, an extremely janky Tetris a couple of times in the last couple episodes. Um, I'm I'm going to be transferring the contents of that cabinet into another cabinet and making somewhat of a Tetris. I'm not going to do any of the cosmetic work because I'm selling it to uh, an arcade that's not too far from here, and they want to do all the cosmetic work. So I've, I've got the uh, hmm. the side art and marquee and stuff like that, so I'm just going to send that with him and let him do all the work because uh, the cabinet itself does need a little bit of work too. It's got some, some bondo and painting that needs to be done, but I'm going to leave that for him. Uh, I'm just going to make it playable, and then from then on it's his problem. Um, 
there's quite a few projects I have that he's interested in. He wants my Robotron 2084. Uh, he wants my Ikari Warriors. He wants the ice cold beer. Um, God, what else does he want? Everyone wants the ice cold beer. It's, it's yeah. something else. Something else. Say, I think there's someone else who wants that. that. No, I don't think there's anybody else. It's just that one guy. Um, I don't have any parts that I'm really looking for, but uh, if you're looking for some PCBs, I do have some that I'm going to be putting up for sale before too long. So if you need a Qbert PCB minus the soundboard, uh, I've got that. I've got a Miss Pat Galaga 20th anniversary board. I have two kangaroo boards because a machine that I converted, just a, an eight-liner cabinet that I converted to a multi-K like I do all the time, uh, the previous owner had turned it into a kangaroo and he had like a, the kangaroo jamma adapter in it. And he had two PCBs in there for some reason. And I test them, I test them out. They both work. They both work great. I don't know why he had two, but he had two. So now I've got two. So if you need kangaroo or two kangaroos, you know, holla at your boy. Uh, one is gonna, plenty. One's probably more than one's enough. good enough. Yeah, one's enough. But if do either can, of them have the speedy mod to them, or are they both just normal? No, nah, they're both stock. Is that a thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Apparently, there's a speedy mod out there for it, or maybe I'm thinking make tracks. I don't know. There's no. There's a kangaroo speedy mod. I'm pretty damn sure. Huh. Does it make the game more enjoyable? Because does anything? Does a sledgehammer make that game more enjoyable? I feel like if you we'll just add a button to it. <laughs> If you add a button to that game and and make it so like the up on the joystick is that button, so you kind of have a jump button, I feel like they would make it more manageable. I I wondered how Atari basically took Popeye and made it worse. They didn't even make it. I thought it was more like a, a DK Junior almost. And, Kangaroo was made by uh, Sunsoft. I, I I know I that like hey let's hire another company and they can make our version of Popeye but make it worse. That's really like we well, we have think- a. I think the story was uh, they saw how successful Nintendo was with Donkey Kong and, and yeah. Donkey Kong Jr. Like, and so they they looked at their current offerings and they didn't have a platformer. And they actually bumped some internally developed games to, to push uh, Kangaroo and Arabian. And all of the Atari engineers were furious and they were like internal memos like, this is the garbage that you're pushing when we're developing what they felt were superior games. I've seen that. There's there's that memos out online, I think. I'm pretty sure I've seen that. Yep. Yeah. But why two boards, Kay? Like, was he, like, planning for the apocalypse because it was his favorite game or something? Uh, that guy did a lot of odd conversions, mostly of A-Liner cabinets to other games. Mm. Uh, that's where most of these boards came out of. Um, I've also got a relief pitcher and a super basketball. I nice. I got out of all that. Um, mm. But... Um, I think I've mentioned it before, but he, he bought up a bunch of games because he was planning to open an arcade, but then COVID hit, so he kind of instead put a bunch of games on a school bus, and you could rent it out to come to your house or party or school or whatever, and you could play a few games on the bus. But some of the the cabinets that he had in there were just so janky, not only in just construction, but like cosmetically. Hmm. Um, like these eight liner cabinets, he didn't change any of the artwork. Like I think he changed the bezel, but the entire cabinet itself was just still had this ugly wood grain and uh, like this gold and brown T molding, and it still had all the previous stickers on it. And was it braided T molding? No, it's it's just ugly. It's just it's like it's brown outline on either side, and then like a silver stripe in the middle. Oh yeah, I've seen that stuff. Yeah, I, anytime I, I take one of those cabinets and build something else, I immediately take that team molding out and put something else in. But and then oh. not only that, but like you know how machines usually have like a back door or like a top. Nah, it's, those, those weren't <laughs> necessary for this bus. Like you can totally oh. reach inside. And <sighs> for anyone who's seen, because I, some people had a who, who had mentioned it before, uh, anyone who saw the janky Tetris, that was one of his machines. And um, the the monitors on several of these games, they were changed to LCDs, but they weren't mounted like you would mount an LCD. Like they didn't have like a piece of wood with the monitor mounted to it with the screws going through it. No, there was like these strips that uh, some people in my content, uh, my comments were saying were meant to hang like PVC pipe or something like that. And they would just they ran across the cabinet and they were screwed into that. And. Which like plumber strapping? Yeah, basically. Oh. Uh, 
it, like you know, so like the strip on a baseball cap that you can tighten, it looks like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pl- um, yeah we call so, it plumber strapping. So it's the metal. Entire, yeah. The entire monitor, you could just grab it and shake it, and it would just fly all around. Nothing was secure. And my girlfriend just said in the comments, the insides were a mess, wires everywhere, not managed at all. Um, he didn't even zip tie the spare stuff or cut it off. He just, everything was just flowing everywhere. Um, everything I've gotten from that guy is pretty janky. Um, and so that's why there's two kangaroo boards, just because jank. Huh. And those those kangaroo boards can be yours. Just have uh, your people contact case. Yeah, people. all you got to do is holler at me because I, I tested them both because I figured – with what I've been saying, some of the machines I got from him, like there was a Super Pac-Man and a Frogger that were in original cabinets, uh, but they've been changed to LCDs and they're running off of 60 in ones with all the other games turned off. But all the original hardware, including the PCBs and wiring harnesses, were still in there. Hmm. Um, Whoa. And I ended up testing that stuff later and there was nothing wrong with them. I've never been that lucky. Yeah. As it just seemed like the weirdest decision to make. Like, I don't know if he thought that was going to be for like longevity's sake, or if he just wanted something simpler so that if it did break, well, he could fix it himself later or what, but. And and not to derail the conversation, but I, I'm surprised that that's not more common. Right. So when, you know, I do a lot of deconversions cause I'm cheap. Right. And I want to get the <laughs> cheapest possible stuff. Right. Yeah. Stephen is complaining about the ads on live streams. I'm sorry, Stephen. If you become, if you if you pay for YouTube Premium, you see no more ads on YouTube at all. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm surprised, right? As lazy as operators were, right, in their conversions, and I'm sure all of us, you know, some did a good job, but plenty of operators were lazy, right? Mm-hmm. Why not just leave the original stuff in there, right? Maybe on one wall, inside wall of the cabinet. And put your other stuff on the other. Like it seems like it's more work to rip the original guts out and like put them somewhere. Why not leave them in the cabinet and you have like free storage for those boards and those harnesses? So I have a theory of why that was all this hassle. So I have a theory. Well, a they didn't care about you. Let's be honest. They only cared about dollars, and they didn't know they were going to be valuable in the future. It's like how Jay Leno got his first Lamborghini. Like he got it for pennies because nobody thought it was going to be worth anything down the road. So at the end of the day, those people that were doing those conversions weren't the, in, probably in most cases, weren't the actual operator that was owning or running the company. So they were paying those guys by the hour. So to take an extra 10, 15 minutes and add to the clock to take a board out so that he can work on that game till the eight o'clock call, like that's, that's what I would do. Or counterpoint with this guy, at least, uh, he had no idea what he was doing when he bought these machines and he just thought he could just have machines and make money off of them. Hmm. And he learned the absolute bare minimum when it came to putting in a switcher pan- a switching power supply, a jam, a harness, and an LCD. And that's as far as he ever got. So that's what he did to everything that he ever got. Hmm. Okay. Fair. I ended up getting almost 40 machines from that dude, and quite a few of them are like that. Wow. Huh. Wild stuff. Cool. Well, let's go to uh, Liam again. Uh, upcoming plans, uh, what you're going to be working on next, what videos are coming up next, which well, WWF see. superstar are you going to impersonate to respond to my video challenge? Let's hear it. Well, I'm uh, afraid to admit I have never seen anything WWFE, whatever, ever. And I know absolutely zip about uh, wrestling. However, well, before you start, am, let me let me interject. I think you would make a great hacksaw Jim Duggan. I have no <laughs> idea who that is, but thank you. Just Google Thanks. it later. Um, I'm uh, that. disappointed that I know who that is. That's that. I can see that. Oh, you just need a two by four of wood. I am. I'm, I'm in the sports ball camp. I know nothing about mm. sports of any kind except for lacrosse a little bit. But um, I am planning on making a video in response, and it will hopefully be about Lunar Lander uh, Ooh. in the other room. Ooh, good, good call. Um, that machine, as people here probably know, does work. Um, it's an Asteroids conversion to Lunar Lander, and it's running an Asteroids PCB. However, I did do some interesting and fun things to make it look and behave exactly as a Lunar Lander would, including an original Lunar Lander control panel. 
Oof. So I think there will be some interesting things to talk about there, like how the uh, lunar lander panel lights work and how they sync with the phrase multi kit. So um, hoping to to have that out soon. We will also have a video about Solar Fox in the background there. Sorry. And since we have Solar Fox in place and we are running low on room, we're probably going to do another tour soon. Nice. which will be fun to uh, see as well. As far as other project plans, there is the aliens cab in the garage that needs a little bit of work. I forgot about that earlier, but the plan is to convert that Konami cabinet into a dedicated aliens and get rid of the uh, dynamo in here and replace it with that because it's narrower. So we'll have some additional space back. There you go. I love it. You're going to have to start putting uh, games in all the other rooms in your house. Yeah. Or dig a basement. <laughs> we already have four rooms of arcade here. Yeah. I thought you were going to say we already have four basements. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dig a basement and then get the six-player X-Men down into it. Yeah, yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> I don't think You'll it's ever it going out. to move again from where <laughs> it is right here. On his obituary, crushed by some Konami. Like, what the heck? Someday when you sell that house, the X Men's going to convey with the property. Yeah, that's 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 what you do. Like Josh has a um, what is it? A virtual fighter. We loaded it into his basement. We joke about that damn thing all the time. Like when he sells that house, it goes with the house. You you actually uh, joke, but I have read someone uh, mention this in a comment that they uh, they bought a house and it had a six player X Men in it. <laughs> And, uh, sorry, buy. Chance, sorry, I'm contractually <laughs> obligated to mute your microphone. We've got Overtime Arcade channel member, Random Pixelated Billy Bob, swinging in with a $500 million Super Chat donation who says, Go sports! Uh, in response to what uh, what uh, Liam was saying just a moment ago. So, what, uh, what are we up to now so I can... I don't oh. know. Somebody, hopefully someone's been keeping track. You know? Not enough. Let's keep Has going. Has Josh on, been man. doing shots every I, time it's happened? I'm, no, he yeah, he'd be drunk. I'm trying to keep tallies. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. five. It's at least five times. Yeah. Uh, because we've had five uh super chats uh, uh so far. So thank you, mm. Billy Bob. Really appreciate it. Um, and uh let's see, as for me, like I already mentioned, I'm literally in the middle of working on the food fight uh pickup video. That'll go that'll be available tomorrow for early access for overtime arcade uh channel members. It'll go public on uh Sunday. One of the things that I'm doing, however, because that is going to be such an expensive, um, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, deconversion, uh, I'm selling a bunch of spare parts. So I just posted into the uh, the live chat a link to a thread on Clove. I'm doing a spring cleaning sale. I'm selling tons of stuff. I've already shipped I, almost every day. I'm going to UPS or the post office and dropping stuff off. Uh, dropping stuff off. I'm selling marquees, as you can see, like in my background here. Around here. Uh oh. Charlie needed himself. Oh, oh, how does that feel? <laughs> how about now? Can you hear me now? There ah, we go. Ah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see, like this, this wall here, uh, really, these two doors, uh, actually, where my uh, circuit breaker uh, is. All these marquees have been taken off and sold. There's another door over here that had marquees that have all been taken down and taken. Uh, again, <laughs> lost you. How does it feel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's uh, gone again. Oh, there he oh is. he's back. I'm back. I think it happens when I turn my laptop and it bumps the uh, the, the wire. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of marquees still available uh, 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 for sale if you need them. Most of them are honestly probably wall hangers, which is how I've been using them. A uh, bunch of bezels, uh, some PCBs. If you if you really need a, a SMK Street Smart working PCB, I got you covered. I got a ton of joysticks for sale, including uh, the SMK LS30 rotary joysticks with harness, tested and working. I haven't refurbed them, but they you know they probably need to be cleaned or whatever, but they work. Mm -hmm. um, so that uh, I got a bunch of miscellaneous stuff, a lot of power stuff, coin buckets. Uh, I got a, a, a Mad Planets linear power supply that'll work in a lot of other Gottlieb games, like um, it'll work in a, in a Qbert. So if you need a power PCB to go with the Qbert uh, boards that you're buying from K, 
I got your I got your power board. So check out that link in the uh, uh, the live chat and go buy some stuff so that I can turn around and spend that money on. Well, I already bought the um, Food Fight PCB. I need to get a joystick. I need to get all this other stuff. I need to get uh, Cuber artwork. Uh, let's see what else am I uh, working on. So in between, you know, getting those games ready to go to Mark's Arcade at Back to the Media in Winchester, Virginia. Um, I still need a Jungle King glass bezel, the one with the artwork on it. Um, my Ms. Pac-Man stencils have been delivered from this old game. There was a Ooh. huge, huge threat on Claw where Rich actually came in and in some in some respect kind of did a, a mea culpa, right? Mm -hmm. And owned up to a lot of the, the delays and whatever. And it was almost like a public um, uh, a customer support threat, right? People yeah. going through and saying like, hey, I've been waiting on this stuff for two years, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, you know, that is what broke my uh, Ms. Pack uh, uh, stuff uh, loose, my, my Ms. Pack uh, stencils that I ordered in December of 2022. I uh, got them uh, a couple weeks ago now. Uh, they're in the corner uh, over there. Uh, so uh, in the next couple of weeks or maybe a month or so, I'm going to um, do the Ms. Pack stencils on my cabinet. Um, however, the, the thing, um, he, Rich does not have an updated... Um, set of uh, paint codes. So the paint codes that everyone used for Ms. Pac-Man forever, uh, the Glidden or whatever paint company, Valspar, I forget, uh, they changed their formula so the old paint codes don't work. So if you are out there and you've got good, confirmed, current paint codes for Ms. Pac-Man, please uh, send them my way. Um, okay. And yeah, working on the Q-Berts, lots of, lots of stuff going on. Chance, you look like you were pregnant with a comment there for a second no i was just thinking because like uh, josh don't you have those paint coats i know he's in the chat i'm like oh so valspar like changed it but maybe it's like there's a canadian equivalent i don't know i don't know so they the the other thing that complicates it right is i want to use i want to use my uh hvlp setup to to spray it uh, right yeah and uh you can mm. do hvlp with latex but i don't really want to do latex i want to do oil uh, there's uh, a handful of states in the U.S. have have outlawed uh, oil-based paints. Virginia is surprisingly one of them. But I really? live so close to West Virginia that um, wait, what? I bought oil-based yes. paints in Virginia. At Are you no, you? no, no, you don't. Yes, I didn't. Nope. No, you didn't. Oil-based paints are illegal in Virginia now. When they might have happen? old stock from a long time ago, but it's been because... it's been for a while. Yeah. Our they have these new things that are like um, they have these other things that are like acrylite or what is it? Uh, um, um, but yeah, traditional oil-based paint, it, you can't get it in Virginia anymore. Massachusetts, California, a handful of, of other states. I think Maryland might be one of them. But West Virginia still has oil-based paint. And the closest Home Depot to me is in Virginia. But the second closest Home Depot to me is in West Virginia. So no problem there. I know. Sean, everything's illegal in, in California. Now that's coming to uh, Virginia. Um, but uh, yeah, if you've got Ms. Pack paint codes, updated current ones, uh, please uh, send them my way. So uh, 90 minutes into our episode, we're done with our intros and 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 basic stuff. So let's go into the, the main topics. And we'll have to do a little bit of lightning round here sure. to reintroduce uh, Chance the Man from the Canadian Arcade. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen Chance before, if you have, you know, please make sure you're subscribed to Canadian Arcade. If you're watching this, it's almost certain that you are already subscribed to the Canadian Arcade. But you know, just to be sure, make sure you're doing that. Um, so, Chance, why don't you give us a little sort of, you know, give us the five minute tour of your life in the hobby? How did you get into this in the first place? Where was the, you know, give us the origin story? What happened? Okay, so I, I, Kay got mad at me, so I pulled the document up, so I have it in front of me now. Um, so yeah, how did I get into the hobby in the first place? Uh, okay, long story short, uh, we have a, a very large mall uh, north of Calgary. Um, and about 10, 12 years ago, when they opened the mall, one of the local uh, operators uh, who shall not be named, um, they had a location in the mall. And I was walking through with my girlfriend at the time. And I'm like, oh, crap, you can, that, that was my, my moment that everybody always has, like, oh, you can buy these things from our childhood. And so I went in there and I was like, hey, can I get a Simpsons? Like, can you guys hunt me down a Simpsons? And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll get your information. We'll call you and we'll let you know. And a few days go by and they they call me back up and they're like, yeah, like, 
$3,500. Now, if you're American, that's like 20 bucks American, I think. But still, seven. that's that seven. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So I was like, okay, this is this is like, I'm not going to do that. And then I decided from scratch, like I'm going to, I kind of want to build my own. Um, so I started kind of pre-planning because I found uh, BYOAC, I found Boyack before I found Clove. And I started kind of like thinking in the background, like, hey, what do I want this to look like? What do I want it to be? And I posted on my Facebook wall, um, hey, here's like a here's like a picture of like a joystick. Like, hey, I'm thinking about this. And one of my buddies who I worked with at Apple at the time, he's like, you're never going to get that done. So I'm like, you, Rob, like we're going to do this. And so I basically just started building it. Uh, a buddy of mine, he lent me because I'm fairly accomplished woodworker i don't mean i don't put the nail gun through my foot anymore but like i started building it from scratch and so i built my first cabinet from scratch um and then after that i was so disheartened by like what it takes to like build a main cabinet and like keep all the software running that and i realized i found like arcade pcbs and it just opened up that whole world and i started kind of gravitating towards collecting and restorations uh because i didn't have to worry with how crappy windows was um, so there is that, that's the truncated version of how I got into the hobby. And so how did, how did your, you know, collection sort of evolve? What's been the, the focus? What do you kind of go after the most? Well, I'm a huge Nintendo guy. Like I, I someone will post a, a picture of a, like a Donkey Kong era cabinet in, you know, a Facebook group. And like the first thing I do, yeah, the first thing I do is I'll look at that picture and I'll go up and even it's like a grainy little low res picture. I'll be like wrong buttons, wrong sticker placement, like wrong uh, coin mix, you know, and I'll, I'll I'll look that thing up and down. There is one thing that's wrong on my Donkey Kong, but you would never see it on camera. You'd have to go over with a, a magnifying glass almost in person. Is there? Nope. It's not that. No. Okay. That's original. Just just had to, let me, had tell to you, check. let me tell you what it is. Sure. So everything else is Nintendo of America 1981, except for the marquee is Nintendo of America. Oh, you actually have a, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and see, like I say that I'm a huge Nintendo fan, but let's be honest, like my red five slot DK that's downstairs has the copyright artwork on it. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, there are two versions or multiple versions of the artwork. Um, ones that have the copyright and ones that don't. And early five slot red Nintendo cabinets that were converted from radar scope didn't have the copyright Nintendo of America on it. So I well, just it was went the to three versions, right? There the three versions, no yes. No copyright, yeah. then NOA, then NOA 1981. Yeah. And I I just honestly, like when I was restoring that and it, it started its life as a radar scope, but I got it as a Nintendo versus cabinet. Um, I converted that to a Donkey Kong. And I just went to Mike and bought a bunch of parts and art because Mike is amazing. So, yeah. So to answer your shout question. Out, shout out Mike's Arcade. Oh, yeah. Big time. Um, to answer your question, a lot of Nintendo stuff. Um, I'm a proud owner of a Sheriff. I'm a proud owner of a Bandito, which is, I would say, is I know it's Exidy, but it's still a Nintendo cabinet, really. Um, Hell of Fire. Sorry, Chance. We got a $200 million Super Chat donation from Sean. It said, time's up. That's it. Okay, just kidding. Thanks for coming you to the show. Have, you, you have a bunch of rare Nintendo stuff, including you mentioned earlier, the Sky Skipper. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm one of the 20, no, not 27. I'm one of the 12 people that have Sky Skippers from the Sky Skipper program. Um, so uh, we've been working on that for like five, six years. So actually, I've been to the UK uh to uh alex from nintendo the Ar nintendo arcade I've, I've actually vanessa and i went well, and visited his formerly place. nintendo arcade it's arcade oh, archive yeah. now sorry I, I keep forgetting he changed the name of the channel um probably because i own nintendoarcade.com <laughs> anyway um but yeah so a lot of nintendo cabinets uh and then a lot of williams stuff predominantly if you look at my collection as a whole um i've kind of just just kind of picked up Williams. I don't know. I really like their stuff. Um, and then I am the proud owner of the, what I would say is the best collection possible or the three games that make the Atari uh, bar height cocktail row. So my argument is, is that, you know, uh, Asteroids Deluxe is the best black and white vector game Atari ever made. 
that you know warlords cocktail is the best four player or is the best raster game atari ever made and that i would say tempest is the best color um arguably the best color the vector game that they ever made and so i, I have all three in a row that, yeah yeah i i would i, I disagree space duel i think space duel makes a better cocktail than tempest i have a space duel upright though so i don't i mm. so but like but anyway so i have all through the hope the, the 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 dream was when i got the warlords and the asteroids deluxe at bar height was to finish it off with the tempest cocktail so i just finished that mm, what a couple months ago i think a month ago so my row is complete if i ever sell them i'm going to sell them in one group but i'm never going to sell them they're going to go in the mausoleum where you or the we're gonna have a Viking funeral, I think. So burn yeah. it, right? Burn it all. Um, well, and so you and and Josh have been on YouTube for a long time. Oh. I think certainly longer than the the other three of us. How did you get into YouTube? How has that experience been for you? Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's happening? a good question, and I really wanted to address this publicly. So I was walking down the street one day. And a van pulled up and all of a sudden Josh and, and, you know, some other friends of his jumped out threw a hood over my head and I smelt chloroform and I woke up in front of a camera. No, I actually don't know how Josh is going to have to say in the chat. Cause I was thinking about that earlier today. I don't remember how we got started. Um, I, I remember how I met Josh and, and that was because I, I was on the John's arcade chat room on the, on the John's arcade chat bot box shout box and um i knew he existed another as another guy in calgary and i had made for the the purple donkey kong multi cabinet that i have um i had made uh, a back panel for it i actually had an extra one because that you know a couple of sheet of plywood gets you two back panels and so i just had it sitting in the garage and he said he needed one for his popeye cabinet so I was like, Hey dude, like, yeah, you're, you're welcome to come on over and, and grab it. And he came over to the, my old place and, and picked it up and he brought a, a, a donkey Kong or a crazy Kong board, which I think he regretted giving me because not long after that, I, I just traded it off for a joust board set to finish my joust cocktail. Um, and so we just got to talking and he was a cool guy and he put up with my crap. And so uh, we just started filming things and, and, you know, it just started from there. I can't remember whose idea it was. Um, I know it was his idea to, to do our April Fool's video that first year where we lit the fake space duel cabinet on fire. Um, kind of like an old, like American PSA film strip video that you would see in class. And uh, so, yeah, so that's, that's what we've been doing. Um, as far as YouTube goes, like I've been on my personal channel, like the Chance KJ channel, which has like seven subscribers. <laughs> I've been making content on YouTube for like 12, 15 years, little, little things. Um, but I've always had a camera in front of me. I've always been with me. So editing video well, is something I've always and, done. And I'm, and I'm looking at the Canadian Arcade channel right now, you know, approaching 12,000 subscribers, uh, you know. Bots. All bots. All bots, right. Yeah. Uh, your first video is from eight years ago. Let's see. Uh, Space Duel Part 1 Pickup. Let's see and see a title upright. Boards, boards, boards. Mm -hmm. Uh, joust cocktail restore uh but then really you, you hit it big when you pivoted into weather weather <laughs> yeah right so no word of a lie um i was on my way over to josh's place we we get hailstorms in calgary like 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 crazy hailstorms and uh, that's why i joke that or we joke that like the canadian arcade basically is just kept the lights on by bots and hail because uh, anyway, so I was on my way to his place. Uh, we were going to work on a project or film a video or something. And the weather was really bad in the northeast of Calgary because he lives on the other side of the city from me. Uh, it's about like a 25 minute drive, 30 minute drive to get there. I got halfway there and he phones me. He's like, whatever you do, turn the f around right now. And I'm like, I'm like, it looks like it's raining. Like, was everything OK? He's like, take cover. And so I like I pulled into the nearest like parkade or something that i could find and then after that and you can timmy's. see it on yeah timmy's <laughs> and he pulled into the awning over the drive-thru and then all of a sudden like the worst hailstorm ever it was like golf ball size hail 
obliterated his neighborhood and pretty much his neighborhood alone, the Northeast of Calgary. And like, if you drive down there, I know there's actually been like, I think one or two other hailstorms since, um, that hailstorm obliterated some of those houses and, and most of those houses still, they haven't replaced some, not most, some, some of those houses still haven't done any of the work to them to replace the damage and like broke windows and everything. And Josh had the foresight to take his camera out and film it from the front deck. And we were debating, like, what do we do with this footage? And he posted it on the channel. And like 4 million views later, like, I can tell you that that was crazy. We had crazy. News. It was it was nuts. Like we had we had we still to this day will have like like Norwegian news like contact us or like CBC, you know, their equivalent of whatever, like contact us like, hey, can we license your video for B-roll or something? Just or... for B-roll for yeah. like their weather channel, yeah. right? Well, and, and so your top three most watched videos are all hailstorms. Yeah, because right? we tried to recreate it two more times just to see if it would work. But lightning only strikes once, let's be honest. Well, I mean, there's still, I mean, any one of us would be thrilled to have those those kind of views, right? Yeah. And then Josh points out pinball did well too. Yeah. And yeah. so the next 10, the next top 10 most watched videos, all pinball, right? Yeah. And then there's the let's wash an arcade monitor. And then it's just pinball, 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 pinball. Right? Yeah, we, we, so you're, we you're miss pinball our calling. Channel. We're a pinball channel. We're a pinball and hailstorm channel. Yeah. I mean, but there, there, that could be a, a theme, right? A future uh, game, right? Like in, in following up from, you know, Whirlwind and um, Earth Shaker. Uh, Whisper, Earth yeah. Shaker. Where's the hailstorm pinball? Steve oh. Ritchie, if you're listening, we need a cut of that. <laughs> uh, we'll split it four ways, right? We'll cut in, we'll cut in Josh, right? Split it five ways. There you go. Okay, I don't know why that video doesn't your 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 video you say in the chat his most popular video by far is him picking up a TV by the dumpster. I would watch that. I well, would watch that over and over and over again. See, and, what's and funny is why... if I turn the camera a little bit, the TV is right there. Like I still have it. <laughs> that's awesome. It's my bedroom well, TV. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's that's why when I called out uh, Kay in my video, I mentioned the uh, dumpster, dumpster diving TV. for TVs. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So. Um, so with all the games that you have, how many how many are you up to now? Uh does the crane does the crane Whatever. count? Everything? Anything that's coin off sure. count? Sure, sure. I think I'm at like 58. I'm not okay. like I'm not pushing like K or Liam so, numbers. So but I'm very, very can't... picky with what I bring in. What, what do to you the mean base? Liam numbers? We have 25 here. I I that's watched your substantial. But really? Because I I watched your tour video and I just felt like you had double that. No. Oh, wow. But a substantial collection to say the least, right? Mm -hmm. So what's, what's left on your wish list? Any grails, any games that you were just dying to get? Um, I would really like an ice cold beer. Uh, okay. Shut up and take my money. Yeah. I would really like. Shut up and take my money. I would really like an ice cold beer. Um, that's the last game on my on my wish list. Um, the last one. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, of my like, I when I started in the hobby, I I I wanted a Simpsons, and you know, I wasn't. I didn't really have that much space. I was living in a in a tiny little apartment that was like a quarter the size of the house I have now, and so I never thought I would ever have more than like two games, and that's why I built my main cabinet at first, and that's why. I have a, a multi Kong purple multi Kong, but that's not why it's purple, but I have a purple donkey Kong with all of the donkey Kong versions in it. Pretty much most of them. And so I never thought I'd have the space, but now that I have the space, like, why not? So I did set a, a, a hard limit on kind of what I wanted to put like in the collection. And, and one of those things was, was a nice cold beer. So that's really what I'm left with. And then, you know, last but not least, any uh, horror stories from, you know, working on these things or collecting them? Has a Zaxxon ever fallen on you? Uh, uh, any People love horror stories for some reason. You know, you, you say has a Zaxxon ever fallen? We, we, yes, a Zaxxon has actually fallen on me. Um, we were, Josh and I were working for, and if you don't know, if, if you're not aware, if you haven't been paying attention, doing the math or watch the previous video the first video that you had us on here um josh and i were the ones who built the arcade for episode seven of the last of us and josh owns HBO's the last of us what did i say 
Canadian you just said Arcade? The Last of Us. Did you I say, say The Last of Us? HBO's The Last of Us. Oh, sorry. Yes, the HBO's The Last of Us. And uh, so Josh, Josh and I got lucky enough to be the guys that built the arcade for that. And when we were transiting his Zaxxon from his house, no, from, yeah, from his house to the set, um, we dropped that cabinet and it, it dropped on kind of on me. I think it like hit me on the leg. Um, so you joke about getting hit with the Zaxxon, but yeah, I've, I've got, and it had a little bit of damage, but production HBO, if you ever, ever, ever get a, a production company or a film company asking to rent or borrow one of your games, like they will always have insurance paperwork, but that's the great thing about the film industry is that they will take care of you. They know how hard it is to get some of this stuff. So like they will, they'll make it right. And and they did HBO made it right. Like pretty much instantly for that game uh, for Josh. And like so, yeah, 40 but I 40 bucks, right? Yeah. For a brand yeah. New one. 40 they bucks. To throw it away and replace it with something better. <laughs> no, no, even better than that. 40 bucks. I was already on the payroll. So they got me to fix it. I, I don't Yeah, that works. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's it's beautiful. called job security. Yeah, it's called. All right. So, <laughs> so without question, uh, 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 Chance has the, the bona fides or bona fides uh, to be here. So, uh, yeah, huge, huge, huge addition uh, to the podcast. And we are thrilled to have him. So, Thank with you. that out of the way, yes. uh, the last thing that we wanted to talk about in this episode, potentially controversial, right? And we try to steer clear of uh, like normal types of controversy, controversy, political, social, whatever you know type of stuff. There's a lot of places out there, dark corners of the internet, the off-topic threads on Clove. But we're we're not at all shy to lean into controversial arcade topics, things like the sense mod, things like whatever, right? And one of them is things other than original hardware, mm -hmm. right? So. Um, you know, for whatever reason, there there could be lots of different reasons why you might choose to use choose to run something that original, something other than original hardware in your games, right? I think in 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 you know, in a perfect world, all of us would have pristine, fully working original hardware, everything, right? Original harnesses and power supplies and whatever. But sometimes there's reasons, you know, why you might not, right? Whether those things are crazy expensive or ridiculously unreliable, or maybe you're short on space and you want to have, you know, perhaps multiple games and as, uh, you know, uh, 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 as little volume as, as possible, whatever reason, there's all types of different reasons. So I wanted to kind of have a little, you know, sort of free for all here on get everyone's take on, you know, one, what do they own? What do you have firsthand experience with? Why did you go with that? Uh, and, you know, what your opinions are of these others, right? Is there a sort of a ranking in your mind, a tier list and things above this waterline are okay, but you like poo poo or look down upon other different options, right? So when you think about it, we got original game hardware, you got like FPGA hardware emulation. So that would be things like the, the J-Rock and there's others that are like that. Um, there's various multi-board kits that maybe are designed to take a piece of original hardware and plug something onto it and add additional games. Like one of the most famous ones is like the multi-ped, uh, uh, um, you know, multi-kit where you plug this into a millipede board and now you have millipede and centipede. Uh, there's also high score save kits where you're actually modifying, you know, you're still running original hardware, but you've got a, a, um, something that's plugged into it to modify it and maybe save a high score table when that wasn't saved uh, uh, originally. And then you have like a jump to software emulation, including MAME and some other stuff, and even like multi-game, you know, uh, uh, boards like the the infamous sixty and one, and then things like um, I don't even know what they're called, like Pandora's Box and all these other things, right? Uh, and then there's people that go like full on, like Chance, you're even building a um, you know full scratch built you know cabinet, and sometimes people will put you know, uh, uh, non-original hardware in that. And like, there's probably stuff I'm not even thinking about. So who wants to dive into this first and kind of, you know, share their thoughts on, on this whole world of, of fake stuff. Fake, fake stuff. Quotes. <laughs> Is it fakes? It's, it's, it's not real. Well, it's fake. there's another podcast out there. Uh, uh, the coin rejects who, who I think are great. 
Uh, one of the big differences with the the coin rejects and the coin jam is we try to keep it PG-13 or less, and they don't. And so they refer to anything other than stock original as fake BS, right? So this would be fake, you know, anything other than original hardware, they would you know, refer to sometimes tongue in cheek as fake BS. But even they have like, there's some fake BS that's better than others. Like they're, you know, like I think most people have a generally, you know, positive opinion of J-Rock, for example, right? Yeah. So anyway, what what are everyone here? What are your thoughts on fake BS? Do you want? Uh, you, go, do you want me to go? For, you can go first. Doesn't matter to me. Okay, I'll go. Um, yeah. So my perspective is going to be a little bit different because I'm coming from a commercial point of view. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, I try to keep things as original as possible, but that's not always possible. And I'm also not willing to sit on a game for two years trying to seek out a single original part uh, whenever I can get a reproduction and get it up, put up for sale by next week. Um, this is a business, so I'm trying to keep things rolling. Um, and when it comes to my customers, the majority of them either don't know the difference or don't care. Um, and that's not, to, that's not to dig on them at all, because for the most part, my customers aren't hardcore collectors who are going after, you know, the original things. They just want a game that they can play. Yeah. And so if I get the if I get them something functional that looks good and looks original, they are happy. Uh, 16 ones are my best sellers. They just are. And I put them in eight liner cabinets with no artwork and people are happy with that. Uh, but if I get it like a, you know, just a Miss Pac-Man or whatever, I'll keep everything in there as original as I possibly can. Um, I, I have had people try to give me some flag before on some of my videos where I end up putting in reproduction boards or something like that. Um, I had a guy like trying to tear into me because I had a Tempest that I put a vector VGA in because I didn't have a vector monitor put in it. I was like, well, here's the thing. I can either put a vector VGA in and have this fully working Tempest that I sold to a customer who was very happy with it, mm -hmm. or I can have a non-working cabinet still sitting in the shop and that guy doesn't get a Tempest. So which one makes me more money? Which one makes somebody happy? You know, at the end of the day, that guy doesn't pay my bills. The guy who commented on my video, it's the guy who's buying the machine who pays my bills. So his opinion matters a whole lot more than random dude on the internet who's upset that I put a flat screen in a Tempest. Well, now it's a working Tempest. Sorry. If I had vector monitors sitting on a shelf, I absolutely would have installed one of those instead, but I don't. I'd have to but see you can always monitors. fix that, though. You can They're always the, put the monitor back. They're that's in true. the it's, field of free vector monitors that you talked about. Yeah. Well, so yeah, that, that's not here in Texas. I don't know where that is, but it's not here. We grow them here in Calgary. We actually keep them under the snow. Anyway, long story. Um, when it comes Every to time somebody point, says vector, I feel like it's it, it's a jinx, and so I have to make sure that all my vectors oh, are still make running. Make sure your the game's not on fire back there. <laughs> As I don't even have my games on right now. You, <laughs> I don't even yeah. have a G08. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to my own collection, like I only have, you know, I, I'm in a one bedroom apartment, so I've got, I've got two pens, and I have a uh, a Dynamo that I I turned into a a Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a multi K. I'm perfectly happy with that. It plays the games as well as I need them to play for me to enjoy them. That's good enough for me. If I had a whole building dedicated to machines, then sure, all the ones that I'd want, I would have the original dedicated cabinets all in a line for me to play. I would much rather play um, Third Strike in an original cabinet with original hardware, you know, CPS3 hardware, than playing it on my Pandora's box. But I don't have the space and I don't want to spend, you know, a thousand plus dollars on a CPS3. So yeah, we are perfectly happy just to play it on emulation because it's it's got a CRT in there. It's got it's got the same joysticks and buttons that a you know a Street Fighter Three cabinet would have. It plays just fine, so that's good enough for me. Um, I don't like putting LCDs in um, classic arcade games. Um, that Tempest was pretty much an exception because you know vectors, but uh, anything that takes like a usually just like a standard resolution monitor, I won't put an LCD in because you can tell the difference. Medium resolution games like the Sit Down Cruising USA or something like that, it's not as big a jump and it actually looks pretty decent. So I don't I don't yeah. mind doing that if I don't have a 25 inch medium resolution monitor lying around and most of the time I don't. Um, the Qbert that I just fixed recently, I couldn't find a, a soundboard for it. 
So I took the PCB out and I put in, you know, one of the repros off a of arcade shop. It works great. I sold it to an arcade. They have it running in the arcade. No one can tell the difference. It's Qbert. It plays. People love it. So if if you want to, you know, dump on the me all over for that. Sorry, just, no, the just, knocker, just a couple days before work. I ended up with a spare soundboard for you. I waited months, and you finally <laughs> get me one. Like right after I get it out the door, you're like, "Oh, hey, by the way, well, hmm. FYI." <laughs> Little late now, but you know, if I sell that uh that Qbert piece of B to someone and they still want that soundboard, maybe I'll throw them your direction. Hmm. Uh, High score save kits in particular, I think, are, are awesome. I, I had a Miss Pat Cabaret in my collection yeah. for a little while, and I put a high score save kit in it, and it was great. Um, I I don't think I even played it enough to fill out the top ten, but the concept was nice. I, I think uh, whenever it does little little quirks to like the attract mode to make it so it's not always on such a static image on the CRT, like the high score save will make it do other mazes too instead of just the first one. Uh, that that saves a little CRT burn in for you, so uh, I, I think that's a nice little addition. I think if they have uh, some kind of kit for a Street Fighter Two, where it makes the freaking elephants not go off so often during the attract mode, that'd be a great mod. It's if called a set of wire cutters. <laughs> <laughs> just kill the kill the audio. Oh yeah, just just turn off the attract mode entirely. Yeah, I think I I'm just gonna say this before because like okay, let's just write off right now. Let's write off high score save kits. Because I would say that the general idea is across the entire hobby, I've yet to meet someone in the hobby who thinks a high score save kit is BS. Because let's be honest, they're not, okay, you're basically, you're just throwing it in front of the CPU and that's it, right? You're not, so, you still have original hardware. So I still feel weird There's about spectrum it. On no, 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 hold on, hold on. Hear, hear me out, okay? Okay. Have you ever heard anybody crap on a high score save kit yes. they go out of, really because if everything i've ever seen everyone i've ever talked to they go out of their way to add a high score save kit for for a couple of reasons one because then they can save their scores and they're not intrusive and three in a lot of cases high score save kits do things that help the game prolong its life prolong yeah it gives it a free play setting whenever like especially on like a pac-man the free play setting just has it on a static image all the time. Yeah, they give yeah, 100%. No, you absolutely. Still have the attract mode. I so, have no problem with them. So I think I think let's just write high score save kits off right now. I think we can all be in agreement except for Charlie because nobody cares what his opinion is on this. Let's just say high score save kits are. All right, yeah, I, I was waiting for that to happen. Yeah, that's so so. Me. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But so I've I've purchased probably a dozen high score save kits. And I've only ever installed one. And the only one I've ever installed was in the Pango because I really, really, really wanted the the um, uh, the popcorn music version of Pango. That's the, PCB, the reason? That's the reason. And, and that was enough for me to get over my, hey, this is, you know, something other than pure uncut originality, right? Mm -hmm. And and to me that was worth it. The other ones that I've bought are, um, I bought uh, Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Junior. Really to get the free play, yeah. Right, but I haven't installed those. Um, I've been, I was, you know, I, I'm, I want to put a second game uh, in the break room at my uh, my office at work. Uh, I've got a, uh, a class of eighty one cabinet in there. The one that makes the most sense for me to put in there is uh, a, my Donkey Kong Junior. Uh, cocktail. I want to. I would put the high score save kit in. Uh, excuse me to to make it free play. But, but, I'm running a red tent monitor in this thing, and I don't really want to run a red tent yoke for, you know, but, eight hours a day, five days a week. But you can you can replace that yoke very easily with a Wells Garner yoke. I know, but I don't want to destroy that. Even though, like, and that's the thing. That's not question. the original monitor in this. So thing. then, then put an LCD in it. Ah, no. Right? <laughs> uh, I also have. I bought a bunch of stuff from Brazington before he went out of business. Right. I was uh, Exactly. I got the the uh, asteroids high source safe kit. Um, uh, I got a bunch of others, and I just I haven't done it because it feels like I'm. I am uh, um, sullying the game. Sullying. It's you right. hurt like, the game's feelings. It, it, yeah. 
No. Something. I don't know. It's just, it skeeves me out a little bit. My line in the high score saves kits are the ones that are, you know, Ethernet connected and, and, and run to the network. I just think those are a little odd. But I personally have. Hmm? What I will say is, I don't think it's been degraded, mm. right? Like, because that's still original hardware. It's just been modified a little bit, right? It's not like you have taken a step back. It's like it is fully original, but it's got some other stuff too. Yeah. That's kind of okay. Is my head. Okay. Yeah. I've especially really liked the Braves kits. Everything that Braves has done has, has been has been lovely. And I think we Great have prices a too. Braves kit for yeah. everything that we own that could accept a Braves kit. Um, I really love having the original hardware running. Um, at this point, all of our machines are running original hardware. Um, it depends on whether or not you define Lunar Lander running on an original Asteroids PCB as being original hardware or not. That's for you to decide. But um, the kits are there, and I've definitely got great use out of them. I think we have um, Space Invaders has a multi-kit. Qbert has a multi-kit. Um, Asteroids Deluxe in the other room has got a multi-kit. Millipede's got a multi-kit. Uh, and I think that's it for our multi kits right now, but we we definitely get a lot of use out of them. Mm -hmm. So I think you know I do agree with what Chance said that you know original hardware is probably the S tier, right? And then like original hardware with a multi kit or with a high score kit on it is still like you haven't degraded it, but it's like you've you've muddied the waters maybe a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. it, yeah. It's 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 you know there's like an asterisk there, right? And then what's the sort of next level? I think most people would probably say FPGA. FPGA, 100% FPGA. I... So for the, for people who might not know what that is, uh, Chance or somebody, why don't you tell them what FPGA is? Oh, let's give the technical question to the, the least nerdy of the group. Yes, let's. Okay, Leo, would you like to explain what a uh, field programmable gate array is? See, you already know more than I do because I didn't know what it stood for. Oh, shit. Okay. Er... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we were so close. <laughs> His mic is cut. All right, I got to make a note of when to bleep it out now. Yeah, that was uh, FPGA one... basically yeah. provides an avenue on a chip to provide to program gate arrays. That's literally what it is. You can emulate anything that would be on a standard chip. There are modules that you can import into VHDL or Verilog that can produce say, processors or specific ICs. The end result is that when running a game in a FPGA, you have something that perfectly represents the original hardware of a game. Mm -hmm. There are caveats to this. Uh, FPGA is a digital solution. It doesn't do analog because, again, it's just a gate array. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that you wanted to do would be external to that if you had specialized hardware requirements or hardware dedicated sounds um some like a, tape, like a tape player like a tape player or yeah. um a vector or yeah. something but there are some designers who opt to use physical circuits in concert with them anyway for example j-rock um the game's board are implemented with the fpga but it uses an original processor on mm -hmm. the uh, on the board as well connected to the fpga so th there's a spectrum there too with what you're doing with with fpgas and yes, I do regard, if you can't have original hardware, having an FPGA in the mix is the best possible solution. So hot take on that. I agree with the, if you can't have original hardware, but sometimes the original hardware, whoops, the original hardware is so like horrible that you just need something to make it work. My Joust cocktail as an example. Getting that Joust board set to work is such a nightmare. Was such a nightmare. And it was it, when I first got it, it was like I was just chasing like chasing the problem around the board. And finally I just gave up and, and I put a J-Rock in it. See, you know, that's actually funny because Williams is my example for why I don't want an FPGA in the mix. And that's because, for me anyway, the the FPGA just couldn't properly do the sound. It is not as capable as the original Williams soundboard. Okay, 
But so, at the end of the day, like, do you? <sighs> we had the FPGA in the Robotron for a while. We had the yeah. J Rock, and it was because we couldn't find a Robotron board set for a while. So it's again the best possible interim solution. Okay. But the second we went from the FPGA to original board set, I noticed two things. One, the sprites actually look better because <laughs> it was driving the monitor better. And two, it sounded fantastic because we could just get the full depth of the sound out from the uh, original board set that we could not get from the J-Rock. Well, let's be honest. Like, we're the 1%. Yeah. Okay? Like, we're the 1%. Like, Josh mentioned it in the chat. He has a Ms. Pac-Man on location, and he is running a 60 and one board in that Ms. Pac-Man. Yeah. That game makes bank in fact out of all of our games on location that thing does so much money like it pales in comparison to anything else we have i went out and bought a galaga like my one of my least favorite games just to try and compete with him at pin bar and nobody can tell the difference nobody cares and that's k's bestseller exactly yeah, absolutely and that well not that but uh, another topic that i thought of um what about bootleg boards when it comes to original hardware like the, the best example I can think of is original Galaga PCBs are kind of notorious for having issues, especially mm -hmm. with all the custom chips that are on there. But if you have one of the bootleg boards that they had back then, like a Galag, yeah, those seem much more reliable, but they still play pretty much original. So is is that original hardware too or no? My There's my Galaga my Galaga space. uses the bootleg. I I my example would be the Qbert bootlegs um, mm. are actually really cool because. Even though in their stock configuration they don't have uh, speech, um, the, the, that spot is populated on the board. It's there. You could just pop in a speech chip and theoretically get speech out of it. And they managed to integrate the soundboard and the main CPU board on one thing. It's actually a kind of cool solution. Um, I'm surprised you don't see more dedicated Qberts with one of those boards with the speech chip section populated. Hmm. Well, like, okay, so another hot take. I I said, I think I mentioned this on one of the previous episodes you guys had me on. Or maybe it was just in conversation with, with in our Discord or something. I bought one of Arcade Jason's Red Alert boards for my Battlezone Cabaret. Mm -hmm. That board was so awesome that after two months, I sold the original... He's going to mute my mic again. I sold the original Battle Zone PCB that I had because it was just it was just sitting there in a FedEx box next to the cabaret. And I'm like, I'm never going to put this back in the game. Even if I sell the game, I'm never going to put this back. It, was it that just, the original PCB to the game? That was the original PCB that Heresy. came with that game. And it, yeah. And I know serial it. numbers. See, well, no, because I was the second owner of it because the first owner was the operator that I bought it from who operated that game for the longest time. And so, you know what? I I just looked at it and I was like, you know what? This game, what, what was the going rate for a battle zone board? Like four or 500, 450 American, I think I got it for it. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, I can, I can, this red zone board is amazing. I can't, I can't say enough good stuff about Jason's stuff. Jason makes amazing stuff. This red zone board is so good that, and I, I can't tell the difference. I, I'm. I would say I'm fairly decent at Battle Zone. I, I know the ins it, and the outs and the is quirks. Is that FPGA? It's F. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no. It's not. no, it's no, it's not. not. It runs but that's, on a TC. It, it, you're right, and it, but it's so good in my mind that I felt like I could take that four hundred and fifty dollars that was just sitting in the FedEx box right next to it, and I could sell that to somebody who needed my board to finish their project, and then I could take that money and you know, put it towards one of my other projects. So I think I can, I can sum this up all nicely in a way that I think we can all agree on the correct way. The correct thing to do with your machines is whatever you want to do with your machines, because they're yes. your machines. Whatever That's someone else thinks you should do with their, your machines is wrong. They can do it with their own machines, yeah. but whatever you want to do is correct because they're yours. And then go out the and paint day, that. It's your collection. Yeah. Go out and paint that Donkey Kong purple. Go and uh, paint the sides if you tap your uh, black and put a 60 in one in it. It's your tapper. 
100 percent not a color tapper <laughs> holy crap tapper. especially if it's a rare color because you know the, the color size they're, they're just kind of ugly so i think a nice black spray paint one coat not two just one coat and that's can, all you need can we all agree on one thing though and i i keep wanting to bring this up and and this isn't like a paid thing or anything i don't know if you guys noticed on cloth but i i think i think all of us pretty much I don't know. I can't speak for you guys, but like, was your first interaction with a good reproduction or a good like FPGA board was the J Rock, correct? Yeah, I so, yeah. yeah, I would say it's great board, world renowned. I gotta say, like, Aaron Crafty Mac, the Bit Kit and the Bit Kit Two. If you've been following his thread, Aaron is a machine. Almost his, every week, new game. Almost every week, and and if there's a problem and, or a bug, like. Dude's on By all it. accounts, the big kit seems to be incredible. And, it is. And, and not to say anything against J-Rock. When's the last time a new J-Rock came out? Well, I'm, I'm, I was heckling him the other day, and I, I said, you need to do a J-Rock. Oh, multi-Williams. because there's Generation like four, 2. Generation 2, yeah. He, he's got, what, Inferno. four boards? He's Yeah, yeah that, that's uh, what I was heckling Williams, him Gottlieb, um, Zuku, and uh, uh, Stern. Stern, yeah. So yeah. the, the, all of those, but when we say J-Rock, we're usually talking about the multi-Williams. That's probably the most popular by far. Yeah. I mean, it was like a, it was a currency during the lockdown when you couldn't get them. You know, they were going out of stock in five minutes. There's one guy that bought nine of them and flipped them. Like it's, it was insane. But so, okay. So the J-Rock multi-Williams, the J-Rock boards, I think is the gold standard. I would, I think it's fair to say. Um, but I would say the bit kit and the bit kit two and yeah. the amount of attention Aaron is putting into that board. I cannot say enough good stuff. Well, I, and, ha I heckle him about adding Simpsons tapper to it, but like what he's done I, for that I, game. He is said amazing. he's willing to do it. Like, yeah. I think, it, yeah. And, and I never had a bit kit one. I only have a bit kit two and it, and it's awesome. Right. And I, I've, it's still what's running uh, in my um, Frogger cabinet just cause I haven't changed it yet. Um, and I and and uh, you know I, I I've also been like evangelizing the bit kit uh, as well. Like some folks, you know, who maybe don't keep tabs, you know, they're not you know uh, obsessively reading Clove every day, right? Somebody was saying something about like, oh, um, yeah, but bit kit doesn't have the, any uh, horizontal games, and it doesn't have that. You know, like, bit kit's over a hundred games now, including I think over a dozen. Uh, horizontal and they keep adding uh, 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 Aaron keeps adding more what I will say right so for for me uh, FPGA is you know certainly the, the next best thing to original hardware mm -hmm. but whenever I have an FPGA board in a cabinet in my mind that's a temporary solution right yes. even if it's a long term temporary solution right yeah. And, and it's like, uh, you know, I, I'll run the FPGA unless, and, and, and again, this is all, like all of my games are for the most part in my house, right? So these are private collection in a home setting, right? So on location, public location, commercial, you know, potentially different. But for me, uh, FPGA is great as a, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, temporary solution unless and until uh, original hardware falls in my lap. Right. So mm -hmm. if I was not fortunate enough to get a working uh, Qbert board set together for a reasonable price, I would have, you know, gone with a, I, I was actually planning on going with a, uh, a J rock, uh, you know, Milestar uh, a board, but one fell into my lap. Right. And yeah, the same a... thing, same thing with Frogger. Right. I got, and, and now that I've got the bit kit, like that can get me to a working game, working restoration, and I can play a longer game and wait until, I, I find a, a board for a reasonable price, right, to get. And, um, up, but um, it's never finished to me until it has the original hardware in it. Bringing up Qbert uh, does bring me to another sort of thought on the on the J-Rock as well. When we got the Qbert back there, one of the top priorities that Sam had was uh, the ability to play Qbert cubes. Hmm. And... If we had not managed to find a Qbert with the multi kit installed on an original PCB, we would have had to get a J Rock and put it in the cabinet and run it basically full time on that because nobody makes a Qbert multi game anymore. 
Yeah. So Come on, Mike Doyle. Mike Doyle. Thing. Mike Doyle has been commenting on my TikTok videos, <laughs> right? So he's still out there. Oh, uh, he comments uh, on my TikToks too. Yeah. So Mike, what's going on, dude? Or a the Mike people, Doyle at least. It, well, somebody named Mike Doyle, right? Could be a parody account. So I'm talking to the real Mike Doyle out there. There's still a demand for your stuff, man. Uh, uh, if you're able to make them, people will buy them. Maybe, maybe this is just me, um, but like, I maybe this is kind of my my mentality when I first started collecting that I I didn't really have much space. But every single time I get a game, because I know Liam, you just touched on like the multi kits. I I think anytime there's a multi kit available for a game, I will go out there and I will get it. Like with the Tempest, I when I made the deal for the Tempest, part of the deal was when I got that PCB from him, I wanted to have the multi kit in it because I wanted Tempest tubes. Like for me, it just adds so much more value to a game to have the ability to play the other games that are associated with it. Like, like Lunar Lander, uh, um, uh, Asteroids and Asteroids Deluxe all in one, in one game. I just think it brings so much more <laughs> value to it. Right. Yeah. We have the multi kits in them and yet we still have a dedicated cabinet for each. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta figure out how to get one of those little slider controllers on the on the cocktail. I'm, I'm who, gonna who do was it. Who's working with that? Was that uh, Bubble and Gellius or something who was doing uh, the uh, the cocktail thruster? I made a thread about it on Clov, and and I think it took off. And every once in a while, people jump back on. I can't remember who it was, but yeah, I I will get it. I didn't. I need to go out and buy the multi kit for it because that's the one I don't have. So, what about well, name? You should tune into the Lunar Lander video that I will hopefully do because there are some fun solutions to make it cheap. Fair. Um, Mame. What, what about, I mean, you were talking about Mame earlier, talking about BYOAC. I don't know if, if Kay, if, do you ever do Mame cabinets for people? Yeah, that's uh, that's what Pandora's box is, is just running Mame. And, no, but like uh, an actual PC in Mame, though, right? Like, I sorry, I'm going to cut in on that. Pandora's box doesn't count. Pandora's box has a JAMA harness on it. What about real MAME? Do you do ever do a MAME cabinet? Does someone say, I want like a thousand games on this. Do you put a PC in there and run MAME? No. The only multi cades I do are 16 ones and Pandora's boxes. Okay. Just checking. Uh, I don't have like anything against that, but I don't know how to do that. I'm sure it's not that hard because people who know nothing about arcade machines manage to do it, but uh, it that's not my man. jam, and I don't really feel the need. The, the, the Pandora's box is going to do everything that they want anyway. So, I would say one of the nicest things about having a main cabinet, especially one that doesn't work right now, that it probably hasn't worked in years, is that you can, well, Josh has one. You can always look up, if someone's like talking about a game that they just found that's fairly rare, you can go over to the main cabinet, you can fire it up, you can find it in hyperspin, and you can play it to see if it's any good. I think, honestly, that's probably, for us... As the one percent, I think that's really the only value to it. I do that. You do, yeah, okay. I do. I just I never never do I'll play something on Mame. I'll play it on my Steam Deck or something. But that was the drive to push me into actual arcade collecting. Was that Windows and the software package and all the hacky crap that I had to do to get everything to work? Especially because I over-designed my Mame cabinet with like RGB LED buttons and everything to like you know, have the right buttons to light up depending on what game I was on. It was just such a cluster of BS that it was like having to get all of that to work together. It would never work. And then windows would crash and then updates. It was a nightmare. So fixing original hardware is easier than, you know what it is. It is. I, I was working on a Nintendo board this morning and I pulled a trace out of it. I would much rather have that and repairing a trace on a Nintendo board. Josh is freaking out in the comments because he thinks it was his Popeye board, but it was mine or the one that I have on for my build. But like, I would honestly rather sit there with a soldering iron than sit there in windows messing around, trying to get something to work. It's a pain in the butt. Main can be a nice gateway for people to discover games and decide that they want the actual ones or just kind of relive memories of nostalgia that, that can kind of bring back the the possibility of you know hey i can actually just buy that game you know yeah I, i've had customers that oh, i got into it i have customers that have uh arcade one up as their gateway into no i'd actually rather have the real thing uh, because you know it's it's just not the same it's too small it doesn't play just right i want the original that i remember as a kid and the arcade one up just wasn't quite enough to scratch the itch so they had to seek out an original yeah 
Well, and to, to turn back the clock, um, I know all of us in our youth probably remember hearing, ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. So we could be talking about this all night. We're way over time already. So why don't we uh, bring this back to earth? Uh, we'll, we'll start to wrap it up here. Um, we'll go back around the horn. Uh, everyone will talk about, um, you know, their, their channel. We'll go with Chance last because I think Chance has a little uh, announcement sort of thing. But oh, yeah. uh, why don't we start with uh, Liam? Uh, where can people find you on the Internet? Where's your channel? Where can we see more of Liam? You can find me and Sam on Retrobotics at YouTube and on Caleb is 64 bit. And we'll hopefully have another couple of videos coming out this weekend, maybe. And uh, either the weekend after that or one more. So come find us there. Awesome. And uh, Kay, how about Prime Arcade? I'm Kay with Prime Arcade Sales and Repair down here in West Texas. Uh, you can find me doing short form videos on some of the repairs and pickups and projects that I do on TikTok at Prime underscore Arcade, or you can find me on YouTube at Prime Arcade TX. Uh, the videos are the same on both places, except on YouTube. They don't have the captions and the background music. It's just organic with me talking. Uh, there should be a new video uploaded tomorrow. Good stuff. And I'm Charlie from Overtime Arcade. If you're watching this either now live in the live stream or watching the video later, you're watching this on my channel. I do uh, long form videos, uh, typically hour plus long, really boring repair videos. Uh, every Sunday afternoons, uh, channel members get early access. They get to watch them a day early on Saturday. Uh, tomorrow for early access and then on Sunday for the public, I've got a food fight uh, pickup video coming. That's the Irish food fight, very uncommon version of an already uncommon game. And uh, yeah, uh, and then I'll kick it over to Chance for his sort of promo and special announcement. Uh, okay, so I am one half. I'm the lesser half of the Canadian arcade. Um, you can. I'm going to get fancy and technical here. Oh, I got to move the the thing here. Hold on. Wait, how do I change my... Malfunction, malfunction. Malfunction. My name's in the way. You told Technology. Me this is going to do so much for people who are only listening to the audio. Yeah, right. So if you are watching us live on YouTube or you're re-watching this on YouTube, you can point your camera at this QR code and you can subscribe to the Canadian Arcade. So I'll There's leave that up. There's conspiracy theories on where that uh, QR code actually goes to. No, no, no. Uh, that's I, I, I had a QR do code. Do it in an incognito window. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I had one from another provider. This is a, an actual QR code. I had one from another provider and it was sending people, when Josh and I were testing it, it was sending people to ads first. So I got rid of that. Um, and then uh, also on the Canadian Arcade, we do a lot of stuff on Instagram. Oh, did it put my name there again? Edit name. Chance. Let's just get no, rid I'm of that. Throwing up, I, I'm yeah. uh, throwing up uh, uh, super chats that oh, take wicked. their names. Wicked. Okay, so this is this is you can you can point your phone at our screen there. Uh, that's uh, the Canadian Arcade on Instagram. Uh, so that's that's kind of where you can find us. We have Twitter, but we don't really use Twitter. I'm gonna still call it Twitter. I know I tag you all Twitter. the time, and you have never ever engaged with any of my. Oh, I, we turn the notifications off. I don't I even think Josh is logged in every week. Every week, <laughs> we we have Twitter just so that we can keep our name as Twitter so that you know it's us. In fact, we have threads just so that you you know it's us. Uh, but yeah, so youtube.com slash the Canadian Arcade and Instagram, uh, uh, the Canadian Arcade is where you can find us. Um, and then a uh, little quick announcement thing. We teased about this on Clov because I wanted to drive more people to the, the show and watch the show. So a uh, quick little backstory. I have this Donkey Kong four stack board that's been sitting in my collection on my shelf for a number of years. I got it with a bunch of boards. And this thing, if you haven't seen, is hacked to all hell. Um, there are, you know, daisy chained everything. There are chips soldered on top of other chips. There's these boards epoxy to. So anyway, we had no idea what this is. And I made a post on on um, on Clove saying which one of you monsters did this. And um, oh, is hell a bad word? Can I not say that? <laughs> anyway, now, now I gotta it twice. Come on. <laughs> Anyway, it's a 16 one. Good night. <laughs> no, so we 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 said that we were gonna we were gonna pull the chip and raw my dent it and then we were gonna like announce a winner or something. I don't know who said it, but we pulled we pulled the chip this morning and we threw it into raw my dent 
It is a bootleg. It is running the bootleg Donkey Kong 3 ROMs. So somebody wanted Donkey Kong 3 so badly that they modified a four stack to play Donkey Kong 3 and put bootleg ROMs on it. The, the most That's popular weird. of the series. Yeah. That, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. So well, I'd say put it on Donkey Kong 3, but we've already decided that that's not original, so... Yeah. I don't know what to say. Well, there's no such thing as a Donkey Kong 3 cabinet. No. No, oh, there is if you, you know, wreck a red cabinet. Yeah, just paint it red. It's fine. Yeah. I don't know. Just a can so, of red spray paint. One coat. One, one last thing I'm going to uh, say is, uh, and I don't know if he's still watching... Robert Freeman actually threw a question up earlier um, that might be good for the next episode. So topic could be uh, moving, shipping, hauling games. He was asking about fast and all that sort of thing. So maybe we should cover that. Maybe that should be a topic for uh, the next episode. We've talked a little bit about this, but not yeah. necessarily. Uh, I've developed some experience with this lately. So uh, maybe we'll talk about that in a future episode. But yeah. anyway, this is awesome. We're coming up on two and a half hours. Thank you all for watching. Thank you especially for everyone that made a super chat donation. Sean Krukshank, Jerry Voluptuous, Stringer Films, Ezekiel the Chicago Retro Ranger, Random Pixelated Billy Bob, and then a second one from Sean. Thank you all so much for your super generous super chats. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for listening. This has been episode 14 of the Coin Jam podcast, and we will see you next time. A message from the government of Canada. <laughs>